uh, <coughs> Kate Floss. Get that off. All right, just a minute. Right, I'm going to get that, get that, get that, get that, got that. Right, I'm going to turn that off. Right, turn that off. Okay, <clears throat> wait for some people to come in. All right, some of these people are coming in. Admit, we've got Sharon. I'll put on the, um, I'll put my video on. Right, I'll put on the, um, we can put all your videos on. Are you, can you put your videos on? Right, who can um who can hear me? I can hear you, Kate. Right, Jody, you've got you, Jody, and I can see you. Yeah, and then I've got my video on. Sharon's here. Um, anyone you can have your camera on or have your camera off. It's really up to you. Um and then I'm gonna to go to record on this meeting in a minute. We'll just wait for a minute. We've opened up the YouTube. And I've got the YouTube and I've got the Zoom. And so I'll just let everybody know that in order for um, in order for me to have the um, uh, the uh, ability to share and everything on the um, YouTube, I need to have a thousand subscribers. We've got six hundred and eighty three subscribers, so we need three hundred and around about three hundred and twenty more subscribers. If we get 320 more sus subscribers, I'm going to be able to share directly on the YouTube and we won't have to go through the um, Zoom uh, Zoom place. I've put the admit onto the Zoom. The reason I've put the admit onto the Zoom is because, hi Maxine, oh she's not here. The reason I've done is because we have had some people came in that came in and disrupted everything so that's why I had to put that in but it wasn't because of any of my um lovely followers that in the Oreo team so don't forget to this Kate Floss and the Oreo team the Oreo team has been working hard behind the scenes and I've been working very hard behind the scenes but we've been waiting for the same supreme court ruling all right have I recorded started record or not I think I did oh yes right so the the record has started No, that's the video. No, I haven't started record. Oh, we don't want to do that again. So even though we have... we're this on meeting the, is being recorded. Okay. Even though we are on the um, YouTube live, um, I've actually do a Zoom meeting and it's on the Zoom meeting that I'm able to show all of the papers. So for the people that are listening on the live and you can only hear but you can't see. I try to post up as much as I can, but if it's from my email, I'm not able to post it up. But some of the things you can just Google it, what I'm telling you to Google. Now, there's something really important that I just wanted to discuss, and this is why this fight is not about New Zealand. This fight is across the board, from Germany to Scotland to Northern Ireland to England to New Zealand to Australia to Canada to America. But what everybody's going to understand is that it, it you, you're you not going to realise this until you keep watching, is that New Zealand and England are glued together, all right? They're joined together in an arc. And it's it's a mathematical equation, but I'll have to tell you later. But Tamati Wakanene, who was an extremely high chief in, um, in New Zealand, and Queen Victoria... They worked together to get the Jacobite king, the Hanover, king of Hanover, King Ernest Augustus, they worked together to get him out of the control of England and Scotland and Ireland. So that this is how this, there's this huge fight that's been going on in our countries for decades upon decades upon decades. And, yes, I've got to show you what's happening. Uh, hi, Bretty Broford. Hi, Amongst Us is there. Uh, Betty Broford, see the witch Jeb Cinder has gone to the Antarctica, which we're going to be talking about today. Big military stuff going on. But while all that's going on, our countries are also being taken over. So this is a huge, huge fight 
uh, that's going on. And what we've got to do is, you know, we, you know, when when there's wars going on, you've got to do what you can from home. Now we've got to watch our courts. Now Rishi Sunak, who's be, just been appointed as the Indian Prime Minister of England, can you even believe it? Now, how was that able to happen? That was able to happen because he had changed. Um, he had changed the oath. Uh, no, sorry, the the English had changed the oaths to allow that to happen. We really can't deal with everything today. You've just got to kind of try and keep up with. Did that get posted, my Kate Floss thing? I don't know if it did or not. Um, did you did you get the Betty Broford? If you're there, Betty, it's uh, Phil Creek. Hi, Phil. This is my YouTube channel, obviously. Okay, Phil Creek. All right, I'm just going to call you Phil. Thanks for coming, Phil. Usually I just call people by the name um, that I see, but that's all right. But um, um, uh, Betty, if you're there, dear, can you tell me, I did post up there the um, the um, the Zoom meeting, but I don't know if it's gone there or not. I don't think it does. No, it hasn't. Why isn't it posting? Hang on. All right. Now I'll put that up there. I don't know why it doesn't um, post there. Mm. Oh, I don't know why it doesn't post there. Um, oh, I know what I can do. All right, hang on. We'll just go over to the YouTube. And then this should come up as the live. As the live. And there's that me. And oh, yeah, it looks like it's there. 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 Oh, no, don't do that. All right, I, I don't know if it's why it's not there, but. Let's do a hello. Ah, did you get the hello? Ah, uh, all right then. Yeah, yeah, I got the hello. All right, everyone can see me. Yeah, but I wanted to, um, I wanted to um, attach the Zoom meeting. Oh, because I've got too many um, characters. Oh, no, I know what's wrong. Ah. Now I know what's wrong. There it is. So if anyone wants to join the, um, right, who's waiting? Gosh, it's just going to take a minute for this to get up and going. And the who's in the waiting room that Diane can't get in? Admit. All right, there's Diane. Right, if anyone wants to come into the Zoom, you can with your camera off. And uh, if you don't want to, you can just watch there from the YouTube. All right, we really got to get started, okay? So I'm going to go to the, um, I heard the airport in the South Island. Yeah, everyone's down in Antarctica. Now, this battle, all right, so I'll just go back to here. This battle that's going on, it's, it's a holy war. We've been through this holy war many, many, many times, from the time of Jesus to the time that the barbarians took all the white slaves from Germany and England. The barbarians were of the Islamic countries and the African countries. They took all the white slaves from England, Germany, all of those countries, and forced them to work under chains and torture and all sorts of things. And at some point in time, the um, well, when when Martin Luther in Germany rose up, now he was a devout, no sound. Has everybody else got sound?
Yeah, we've all got, well, I've got sound. Who's got, Diane's saying she's got no sound. Have you got sound now, Diane? Yeah, I can hear now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it just takes a minute to get these things going, but everybody be patient. We're all doing our best here. We, you know, we're all going to have to go on this huge journey of learning and we all have to study anybody that's interested in saving our countries, saving the Commonwealth. We're going to have to work hard. We're just a little group. We're building God's army, and God's army is getting bigger and bigger. We've got a lot of people. Nick Ludby's come in. Of course, Betty Brovert, who's our all-time favourite. Uh, we've got Phil, Phil, who is called Amongst Us, and we're talking about um, we're talking about Antarctica now. The battle that's going on. I'm not doing history today. We're only doing the court documents. And we've got to do the history. I'll do a tiny little bit of history, but we're on the court documents because we need to show you all what you need to do in each of your countries to get yourself back under the protections, all right? Now, you need to go back under your subject protections, and your subject protections is pre-citizenship. Before you were made citizens, you, we were all subjects. And when we were all uh, subjects, right, here's another one's come in. Uh, but they go to the North Pole, right? Don't, right? Don't, don't worry about it. So the fight here has and is always has always been and always is the fight for Antarctica and fight for the shipping lanes that go through to Antarctica. Now, New Zealand is. I'm not going to go into all of this. I really am not. We have to come and do another video about Antarctica. But the fight is with Russia, America. New Zealand, Australia, and the Pacific. This is what the fight is all about. They're all fighting over who's going to get the passageways. They've changed the name of New Zealand to this place called AT Aroha, and they've signed us up. To, they, they've sold us. They've sold the top peaks of New Zealand, and they've kept. They're doing something. There's a whole lot of stuff going on, but we we cannot get distracted here. What we've got to do is our bit in the courts. Now, Rishi Sunak was just appointed the Indian Prime Minister. If you watch the last two videos, very important, go back and watch those last two videos that are crucial to your understanding of what's going on with Kate Floss and the Oreo team. So um, now he now how does an Indian national um, become the Prime Minister of England? when he's supposed to swear the oath. So I'll share this document. I sh shared it in the last um, video, but I'm just going to share it one more time here. Now, this is called the oath. Right. Can everybody see that? Do I need to make it bigger? Right. So this is All called... Good. Eh? All good. Right. Can everyone see that? But you won't be able to see it on the YouTube, but I'm just going to read it to you and, and let you know. If anyone sees anybody in the waiting room, um, can you just let me know and then I'll be able to let them in, okay? Or like Hannah, Hugh Guinness is coming in. Right. A lot of people are coming in. Right. Good on you, Hugh. Well done. Yeah, everybody's realising that you can come in my Zoom. But if you're not able to, then you can stay on the YouTube. We're trying to get to as many people. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So this is called the Oath of Office. Now, previously, there were these oaths here, and they were bound up in um, they were bound up in this Will and Mary. So here's our original Will and Mary. Okay, and what? Are, can you see my Will and Mary, or you can't? Yes, you can. So this is the original Will and Mary. Now, under the Will and Mary, this document still stands today. It's got all of the things. If they wanted to govern us as citizens, it's got all of the rules that they have to follow. And if they don't follow those rules, then A, they're not allowed to be in Parliament, and B, they're not allowed to even have any governance over us, not by the courts or anyone. So this is the this is where all their power is rested on this. Now, you get a lot of these common law people and they're all telling you that this is gone now and nobody's using it. But that's not true. The problem is no one's going to the court and declaring themselves. You've got to get in the courts. Now, we've already made it. 
We're in the Supreme Court fighting to be taken out of our citizenship status where we're all in a lot of danger. Where we, This is actually a protection order that was created for the Protestants that uh, left Germany. In, in, in uh, Martin Luther in Germany, he um, entered the Catholic Church for many, many years and he studied it and he left and he didn't want to be under the doctrines anymore. And if he wanted to leave, the penalty was that he would suffer from a thing called anathema. He would have his tongue cut out, his gizzards cut out, and he would be hung up in the town square for everybody to see, simply to see it simply because he left the, the church when he was forbidden to. He nailed his 95 theses to the wall of the Catholic Church, and that was when the, the Protestants began, all the people that didn't want to be under the religions, they wanted to be Protestants. And the, the church, the three religions, the Islamists, the um, Catholics, and the um, and the Jewish religions were, were punishing the Protestant people, cutting out their tongues, hanging them, whipping them, every all those kinds of things, uh, simply because um, they wanted them all to be under their laws. The Protestants rose up. They said, no, we're going to make it. They made the 1688, which is actually a protection order. And there's many things in here. I've read it extensively, but you'll have to go and read it yourself because we're not doing that today. I'll just go to the New Zealand version because the New Zealand version is um, is better than this. This is the proper version that can't be changed. But what they've done is they've taken this and they've put it into legislation and it's the legislation that can be changed. Now, the legislation, if the legislation is changed, right, anybody can go to the court and challenge that change in the legislation. And then you can force them to go back to this original document that can't be changed because it's a protection order that was given to us 400 years ago. So they, they can't change this one, but they can change the legislation. So the, in the New Zealand legislation, now you've got these in Scotland um, and all of those places. I work from the New Zealand le legislation only because it's easier to read. So that's, that's why. But in an actual fact, when I go to the court, I always use the Will and Mary. It's the Will and Mary that has power and not this legislation, that this legislation has got power, but not as much as the will and Mary. If they've made a law that's repugnant, they can keep that law as long as nobody complains. If anyone goes to the court and complains, that's when they have to uh, listen to you. And so it says here, so that's why it says, whom it pleased almighty God to make the glorious instrument of delivering this kingdom from popery and arbitrary power. Now, all religious texts are arbitrary power. The, the Torah is arbitrary power. The Quran is arbitrary power. The canon, the book of Japheth or whatever they call it, is arbitrary power because they can be changed according to the will of man. So that's, and, and they can change the laws as they feel, see fit. Um because they believe that they get their power from God. It's a whole story. But anyway, so this one here is under almighty God. And you can see you don't get many rights. There's only about 10 or 15 rights there that you get. And this is actually a protection order with the main two being no cruel and unusual punishments and no forfeiture of your person. What's that sound there? So a forfeiture of person can mean many, many things. It also can be a forfeiture of who you are, that you exist. Now, back in the time of God, back in the time of God, I have a lot of problems with people not really knowing what this word subject means. And I'll just quickly explain it today. The word subject is, uh, you have to look in the English grammar. And it comes down to all the objects in the world. If you go to a foreign country and they show you an object and it's an object that you've never seen before and if you don't have a name for that in your brain, then it's, it is simply called an object 
or a subject, but it doesn't exist in your brain. It doesn't exist. So in God's world, that if you go up to the heavenly realm, God has no name either. So that all things in God's world don't really have names. So he, he they exist on the earthly plane. That's why every single creature, every single tree, every single plant has to be named. And if it's not named, it's deemed not to exist until it is named and is put on record as being something that exists on this earth. Until it's been named, it remains in the heavenly realm. So that's, we used to be subjects and as subjects under the protections of almighty God here, these were the few laws that were given to us that should apply to every single subject on this planet. And so we should not be subjected to any cruel or unusual punishments. We should we, sh we must be allowed to speak because in God's law, the, the creatures cannot control themselves. We are, we, if they make laws forbidding us to speak, we are doomed to break those laws because we, they're not allowed to make a law that we cannot keep because we are doomed to the punishment because it's the forces of our godly nature that will force us to do those things even if we don't want to. That's when you have an orgasm, right? I'll say something. It's not that I want to dirty up the video, but some people who are being raped, no, no offence to anybody, they have involuntary uh, orgasms. They can't prevent themselves. It's an act of nature which they, they cannot control themselves over it. And then this has been decided in court. So, And that's the same with speech. We can't control ourselves from speaking, that we are, we're doomed to express what is on our minds. And so we, if they uh, prevent our speech, we're doomed to be punished, doomed to be um, beaten up or whatever it is that they want to do. So that that's what these this meaning of subject means. What How you exist in God's world pre-being given a name, right? So these are the laws that they have to follow. And then I'm not going to do these because I've gone over it many times, but the main thing is that um, the main thing is the supremacy law. That's why they're calling us white supremacists because under the supremacist law, it says, I do declare that no foreign prince, no foreign person, prelate, state, potentate, has or ought to have any jurisdiction, power, superiority, preeminence, authority, or ecclesiastical or spiritual within this realm. They're not allowed to govern over us because they're religious, so help me God, because their religious laws are arbitrary. They're different for each religion and they're not allowed to place Protestants who, or anybody, atheists, whatever, they're not allowed to place us under their laws if we don't wish to be under them. So that's what this is about. Now, we're going to go over here to the Oaths of Allegiance. So can everybody see my Oaths of Allegiance? Can you see that, Jody? Yeah. yeah. Right. Nice and clear. Nice and clear. Right. Is my YouTube still on? Is it? Yeah, YouTube's still on, so everybody's still there. Right. So we are on our Oaths of Allegiance. Now, all this Oath of Allegiance is bound up on the way that they have to govern the subjects. And uh, the, the, in the 1688 Bill of Rights, it says there, if they don't govern us according to those rules exactly, it's in every one of our cabinet manuals, if they don't do that, we are permitted to go to the court and ask the court for a declaration. If we don't go to the court and ask for a declaration, then that law becomes law as a citizen. But you have to go to the court, declare yourself a subject, stand in your subject status and force them and make your questions about that law that they've made. And what it says in that 1688, if they make any law that comes into question, then you can go to the court, you can get a declaration, and they will all be ordered to stand down. That's where we are. Now, that only occurs if the parliamentarian parliamentarians 
follow the oaths of allegiance. So here, this is the oaths of allegiance that they used to. Now, wait till I go down. So this it says, when judges are sworn, they must take two oaths, two affirmations. The first is the oath of allegiance, and the second is the judicial oath. These are collectively referred to as the judicial oath. So they have to take two. The oath of allegiance, listen carefully if you can't see my screen. I, and you put in the words for us, we're called AB. I just want to explain to you what this AB means. I'll do it in future videos, but I'll just quickly tell you now in case you're watching my future videos. AB is a mathematical equation. It dates back to thousands of years ago to the first um, people that created maths. And AB, if you have one circle, is the A. And if you have another circle, that is the B. And you can have C, D, E, F in each of those circles. And then when you combine those circles together, there's a piece in the middle. The people that are in A could be one tribe or one state. So in each country have different groups of people with different plans, rules that they want to be under, and they have different states, right? And then uh, so that is A in one circle and B is another group. And when you want all of them to follow some laws, if you join it together, you can put A and B into the centerpiece of the laws that all of them will follow, and then you keep them separate to their customary laws that only they want to follow. That is the AB, and that's why you, when you see this oath of allegiance, I don't know if you'll see this here, IAB, that's talking about the one tribe and the other tribe, and they're joined together under this set of laws that everybody promised us to follow under Almighty God, right? So I, A, B, do swear by Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III, his heirs and successors according to the law. Now, this is important because it says according to the law. All laws must come from Almighty God's laws. So they can't ascend uh, they don't ascend if they don't fit with Almighty God. Then they take the judicial oath. I, A, B, do swear by Almighty God that I will, will, I will well and truly serve our sovereign king, Charles III, in the office of, and that they give their office that they're taking, whether they be a judge whether they be a clerk, whether they be a prime minister, whether they be an MP, whatever they are, they put that there. I will do right to all manner of people. Where it says I will do right, they're talking about the will and Mary and our rights that are all in here, okay? So that means that they will not make any judgment at all that will be are repugnant or contrary to the right that Almighty God gave to you, all right? So to all manner of people. So this is given to Islamists, Jews people, Catholic peoples, Hindu people, whoever they are, this right is given to everybody across the board. This is that I told you that this is actually a protection order for everyone against each other. So each one of us belongs in here as a protection, right? And then with I will do it without fear or favour, affection or ill will. So they're not going to give any favour to anybody. So that's why this is so important. As nobody's in the waiting room, are they? All right. So moving on to the next piece. Then they give an affirmation of allegiance, IAB, do solemnly, sincerely, true, and truly declare and affirm that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III, his heirs and successors, according to law. Now he's making a declaration. Now, when he's swearing to the king, who's where does the king get his authority? 
the king gets his authority from our rights and he only gets to have this right as it pleased Almighty God. He's only the instrument. He's the instrument of God to enforce these people that took the oath, to enforce these, to uphold their oath. And if we, if they're not upholding their oath, we petition to the king and the king himself will order them to stand down. And if he doesn't, then the king himself must be removed and replaced with a new king. And it tells us where to get the new king as well. But that's another story. Now, where it says there, the declaration, I truly declare, that comes from down here where they do the acceptance. This comes under here by a declaration that they make they make a de declaration that all of their laws and all of their articles and everything to be declared will be um, will be absolutely and truly according to our ancient and indubitable rights. Now, indubitable rights is not the same as inalienable rights. Indubitable rights means that these are rights that can't ever be questioned by any man on this earth because they're from God directly for you. Now, then we get the affirmation of the judicial IAB do solemnly, sincerely and truly declare and affirm that I will well and truly serve our sovereign King Charles III in the office of, and then they put their office that they're taking, and I will do right to all manner of people or to all man. That would have originally been all man. I will do right. I will do right to all man or manner of people. Now, some of you don't understand what this word people means. People comes from the word peon, P-E-O-N, and the N is dropped. So we laborers used to be called peon slaves. And peon comes from the, the peon slaves that all gathered together, just like um, Martin Luther did, and demanded uh, that we would have our rights. We demanded if any of them govern us, we would have our right. They drop the N and they put on P-L-E. So it's that should have been an N there, which would have been peon. We were called peon slaves. And they took down the N and they put on P-L-E. And in Latin, P-L-E comes from the words peons legal education. It was a peons legal education that they made a simple set of laws that we could live by to protect ourselves from these evil barbarians that keep wanting to rule over us. So that's where all of that uh, came in. After the laws and usages of this realm, without fear or favour or faction or ill will. Now, here's where the oath went pear-shaped. Now we're talking about Rishi Sunak, and Rishi, Sun Rishi Sunak is his name. Rishi Sunak, now I'll just say to you that um, this word Sunak, uh, the, the Thai language in Thai language, now Thai language comes from the ancient um, in Indian language called the Sanskrit, which is where all a lot of all Asian language come from the Sanskrit and all European languages come from the Germanic tribes, the Germanic scripts. So um, the word Sunak, Strangely enough, the word sunak means dog in Thailand. That's what it means. And he's Rishi Sunak. And if you think of God, G-O-D, spelled backwards, is the D-O-G. So there's a real spiritual thing going on. Now, look what he's done. Members of the Hindu faith will omit the words, I swear by Almighty God, and they will substitute it with the words, I swear by Gita. And we can go and have a look. Is everybody seeing my screens? Just to check. Yeah. So Jody, you're seeing. So we, I'm not going to read all of you. You can watch my videos and then you have to go and research. Do your own research. So this is the Hindu. Uh, it's called the Bhagavad Gita. And this is from the Sanskrit, from the Hindu scripture. 
And so whoever swears to Gita is swearing to these gods and of Mahatma Gandhi, I suppose, all of those things, they all come under those laws. But what you need to understand about all of these laws are that these are all laws that they demand that you follow, that the people follow, all right? But this 1688 Bill of Rights under Almighty God are the laws that all of they must follow, all their religious leaders, all the kings, all the queens, they have to follow this. But these laws here are laws that they order you to follow. And if you don't follow them, the punishments are very, very, very extremely cruel. So that's so when uh, someone swears the oath of allegiance to Gita, what they're basically saying is that we don't accept this Bill of Rights. And so the all I will do, I will do right to all manner of people, I will do right to all men, automatically becomes um, uh, void, basically, because they've said, I swear to Gita. And the right, this is why Rishi Sunak keeps announcing that he's going to take care of the minorities and the, um, and what does he say? Not the minorities um, of the, he's going to take care of the world's most vulnerable people. In their eyes, the Anglo people are not vulnerable. Only the Indian people are vulnerable people. The Hindus and all of them, apparently they're all vulnerable. And that's why he keeps saying that he's going to take care of them because he's sworn, I don't know which one he's sworn to, but there's I swear to by Gita. Now, we won't do the Jews because here's the difference. This is the Jewish faith. But it says that they swear to the oaths above and they affirm the oaths of above. So that means they agree to all of this. And so even though they're Jewish, they have managed to separate their Jewish laws from their, their uh, civil laws, so to speak. And so they've learned that if they want to be in parliament, that they need to govern according to our civil laws under Almighty God. But when they go back to be with their families and with their faith, they then revert back to their Jewish laws for themselves and their family. So these Jewies in here, they're all right. Don't worry about them. But then you've got these Muslims, members of the Muslim faith, will omit the words, I swear by Almighty God, and they will substitute it with I swear by Allah. If they swear by Allah, that means that they, once again, they're not upholding our rights, they're not upholding the oath. And not only that, they've got truckloads of decapitation laws, stabbing laws, hanging laws, um, burning laws, acid in the face laws. All of these laws come out of the Quran. So when they swear to Allah, they're saying, if you do anything to offend me, we're not going to uphold, we're not going to uphold your protection order that says that you're allowed to speak against me. We're not going to uphold your protection order that you will not be subjected to any cruel or unusual punishments. So this is a very dangerous thing that our parliaments have done. Members of the Sikh faith will omit the words, I swear by Almighty God, and they will put in, I swear by the Guru Nanak. And so they're swearing by the Guru Nanak, and the Guru Nanak is for all of the Sikhs, and they've also got many, many laws. So when any of these people take the oath of office, you're no longer being governed under Almighty God and you're not being governed under your Anglo-Protestant laws anymore. So we have entered into the court. I'm going to turn all of those off and you can go and research it yourself. So you want to go and research the Guru Nanak, all right? Write these down if you want to write it down. 
going to see if there's any. Right, there's nobody in there. So write these down if you want to write them down, the Guru Nanak. Uh, then this is the um, Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita. Go and have a look at them, but this is the Krishna laws. The problem is, is that they start speaking because their laws came before ours. You see, this is the problem. And the problem is when they start speaking in these languages and forcing us to um, speak uh, these languages and forcing us to sign documents with these languages on, what you don't realize is that you're putting them yourself under their faith and under the laws of their faith. Now, our Maori king in New Zealand has been put under one of these faiths. It's another story, but he he has been put under the Muslim uh, faith, and they're trying to and they change the language of New Zealand to from English to the Maori language, and then they made that Maori language into the Muslim faith under the Quran. And New Zealand is basically being ruled under the Quran right now as we speak. They are just slowly uh, changing it over. So, but this oath here, this all comes about because of what England did. England has done this because England put this into their laws. And when they did, it affects all of, all of the Commonwealth, even though you think it doesn't. they Once they get one country to fall, the rest of us are going to fall. Now, they have flooded New Zealand with... Uh, an Indian sect called the Tamil, and I heard that Rishi Sunak is uh, from the Tamil. So we really need to keep an eye on what's going on there. So you can look up the Bhagavad Gita and, and you can look up your Bill of Rights. Now we're going to go to the big reveal of the court document. We have put in a court document to the Supreme Court and I've had a letter. So here he says, I'm going to read out the letter. Catherine Ann Sixtus, first Jacinda Ardern, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, and others. And then he said, I think I can show this because it's a public document and he's a public servant and there's nothing in here accusing anybody. It's only saying that this is what the case is about. And uh, Jacinda Ardern is not guilty of anything. She's just a respondent who was called to the court to ask her about a question of law in this 1688 Bill of Rights because I have um, they have put 60% of New Zealand Parliament uh, foreigners and before we know it, we're going to be ruled by an Iranian or a Somalian just like England is now ruled by an Indian guru of ANEC or whatever he is. And so this is what's coming to New Zealand. So I made the question of law that um, foreigners are in our parliament and they're not supposed to be there according to the oath. And so I, that's why I called in. It's only asking about a question of law. Now, I did say to them that I would like to be put under the protections of my subject status because I'm not trusting my citizenship status anymore. If you go and watch the video of um, David uh, David Higgins and Kate Floss, you'll understand what we were talking about, the subject status and the citizenship status. We've got to get back in the courts and get back under the protections of our subject status and then, then we can fight from that point of law, all right? So it says here the Supreme Court Registry has received the application for leave to appeal. The application for fee waiver, subsequent documents that you've filed on the 29th of September. Now I'll show you that in a minute so you'll have to wait for it. Through the court's file and pay system. Applications that come within the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court to consider must also comply procedurally with the requirements of the Supreme Court Rules 2004 and are subject to payment of the required filing fee or fee waiver. Now, what had happened is when I took them to the first court, as you know, I got thrown out on a strike out because they said, you're not a lawyer. And since you're not a lawyer and we're a corporation, you're not allowed to represent yourself. I appealed that strike out and, I, and the appeals court, and then they also refused 
to bring the respondents from the parliament into the court. The, um, the appeals court uh, disagreed with them and the appeals court said that we have a case and you must come. But they slapped on me um, altogether. It, it, the court fees were around about, I won't say exactly, but around about $3,000 and $7,000 for the lawyer's security fee. Now, I slapped them back and I said to them that under my rights here, that it is the right of the subjects to petition the king. There's their oath of office. Their oath of office is all about the king, all right? And then I said it's our right to petition the king and all commitments. That means all monies that they require from me is illegal that I'm allowed to petition the king for free. So then I put in my application and then uh, they're waiting for acceptance from the Supreme Court. But what he has said is that my papers are not in order. So I haven't been turned down. He said the application for leave to appeal you have provided does not comply procedurally with the Supreme Court rules 2004. For your assistance, I have attached a blank copy of Form 1, an application for leave to bring civil appeal to the Supreme Court. Please complete and return the application form clearly, identifying the judgment you seek leave of this court to appeal, including the date and the judge who issued the decision. When we have received the application for leave to appeal, that complies with the Supreme Court rules, the matter can then be progressed. However, the application for leave to appeal in its current form has not been accepted for filing. Now, here's the application that I made. Oh, which one shall I go to first? All right, I'll open them up. So here is, so this is the, um, I hope this all opens up. Is it gonna open? I'll just try again. Oh, I might need to open up my thing again. All right, just wait for a minute. I think I'll just open up um, a new one. And then, oh, sorry, your name's up there, Jenny. <laughs> sorry. Just want to get this. Ah, there it is. Right, so this is a better one. All right, so this is Form 1, and this is the application that you have to make. And it, they give you a lot of lines there, and um, it's just asking what is the judgment that you seek from the Supreme Court. And then they put it all in here. And then they said the criteria that you must meet is that you have to um, be using uh, Oh, hang on. Ah, uh, yeah. So you have to be including uh, the, in New Zealand, we've got a document called the Treaty of Waitangi. The Treaty of Waitangi is simply an immigration document. When all the white slaves were taken out from Germany, Scotland, Ireland, and England, when they were all stolen and they were put on ships, they were lied to. Their youngest people, as young as 10 years old, were especially young boys, young girls, young as 10 years old, they were put on ships and shipped out to all of the English, modern-day English-speaking countries as white slaves to build their nations. Now that their nations are being built, they're trying to get rid of us with this decolonization bullshit. And what it is is that they needed us for a certain point of time for a couple of hundred years. They put locks on all the lands in those countries and so that nobody could sell them. You could only buy them in the paper title. And they took all the white slaves from their native lands of Scotland, Ireland, and Germany, and they dumped them in America, 
Canada, New Zealand, Australia, and South Africa. We all lost our um, we all lost and our national identity, and we all lost our ability to claim our allodial land that belonged to our ancestors right back at the beginning. They scooped us up and they dumped us in these other countries. They locked up these other countries, sold us paper titles, and then 200 years later, they've said the hospitals are built, the schools are built, the roads are built, the railways are built, everything's built, and we no longer need these little white Anglo peon slaves anymore. We're done with them, and now they're bringing in people like Rishi Sunak to take over all the hard work that we put in. They're bringing them in. And, and they're putting us back under um, the, the heinous laws that they had way back in Germany, pre-Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, Martin Luther of Germany, the Protestant, they're putting us back all under the laws that they fought for hundreds of years to get us out of. And so the Treaty of Waitangi was a, an immigration agreement with the natives that covered all the natives in Australia, Canada, America, everywhere, that, that all the white slaves that were brought to these countries would be put under the protections of, of the king of England, and that was the 1688. And that's what they're trying to remove from us now. So in New Zealand, they say you have to have a clause talking about the Treaty of Whiting, but what they really mean is it has to include this Bill of Rights here. That's what they're talking about. Now, now where else are we up to? I have to close that one down. So the, the one that I put in, okay, here. So the one that I put in is here. So you can see here I have written the whole thing. So what the I called up the court and I said to him, what is wrong with my submission? You don't really need to read it. But I said to him, what is wrong with my submission? And he has said to me, it's too long. So he said that the, I'll, I'll just, uh, so the good thing about this is that, um, so when you go to the, if you're on YouTube, uh, when I put up the Zoom meeting, you'll be able to see these um, documents, okay? So you can't see them right now, but you'll be able to go and have a look at them later. So what it just means is is that uh, the one that I put in was completely and absolutely of every single case, everything was in there. And he said, you could, that's for submissions. And he's asked me to put a brief outline on the application form. And so... And then he said they'll decide within the next couple of days whether they're going to accept it or not. But it's still looking good because we haven't turned down. So all I've got to do is take a couple of phrases. So it's not looking too bad. All I've got to do is take a couple of phrases, take the relevant laws. I need to take out all of the explanations I'll take out. And then all I put in is the relevant laws, which are already can't see anything. The relevant laws, which are already here, you see these uh, relevant laws? I'll just put in these few relevant laws and all of this stuff will not be put in there. And so that will go onto this application here and then we should, within a couple of days, get, um, get a notice back from them of, um, right, now I can see everybody. Uh, we're going to go to discussions for a few minutes in a minute. So anyone's got questions can ask me and we'll be reading what the viewers um, have been asking me. So uh, what is happening here is that my, I'll just stop and chat for a minute. Uh, my, uh, so first case was thrown out because they said you're not a lawyer. I appealed that, went to the appeals court. The appeals court ordered uh, the respondents, Jacinda Ardern, to come to the court and meet with me about my question of law about the 1688 Bill of Rights that says that no foreigners are allowed to govern in our parliament and this should apply to Rishi Sunak. It really should. 
you've got to get in the courts over there in England and do what I'm doing. Get yourself back under your subject status and you, and use your power from there. That's where your power is because that's the power of the king. Now, if we've never needed the queen. We've never needed the king. In, in all our 200 years or 400 years that the king's been there, we've never needed them, but we need them now. That's why they've been sat there all these years and we need them now. So you've got to get back under there, back under the king's armies and get back your protections now. So I went to the appeals court and in the appeals court, um, uh, they ordered the prime minister to come in and answer my questions of law. However, they slapped me with thousands of dollars in fees. I went back to my subject status and I looked there and it said anyone can petition to the king in their subject status and all commitments for doing so are illegal. So I put that and I said, you can't force me to pay. And there's other laws that back me up on that, but I won't do them today. The, the Supreme, the Appeals Court Registrar, I applied for a fee waiver under those uh, rules and the, um, the Registrar of the Appeals Court turned me down. I appealed the Registrar's decision. Then it goes directly to a proper court judge, not a Registrar. The Registrar looked at my appeal and he came back and he said to me, you're not, a, he basically said, you're not a subject. You're not standing in your subject status. You're standing in your citizen status. And as a citizen, you have to pay like everybody else. Well, I was talking to David Higgs and he said, what you've got to do is you've got to go back to the court and you've got to get scoop. You've got to explain to the judge why you feel in danger in your citizenship status and why he needs to scoop you up and put you back into the protection order of your subject status. So you've got to explain that to the judge. And if you make a good case, that's what he'll do. But if you don't make a good case, he'll keep you in the safety of your citizenship that's under the parliament that's governing you. So, so David Higgs explained that to me really well. Now, so then I now appealed to the Supreme Court and I said to the Supreme Court that I demand to be put in my subject status so that I can go back to the first court and fight my case in my subject status. And I've asked them to put me in my subject status so that I have the right to petition the king and all the fees will be um, no commitments of fees. So that's sitting there in the Supreme Court and then I've got to do these few little tweakies on there. And then when I do that, oh, that's what I'm, no, that, no, I wanted to tell you something. The judge from the appeals court sent me the letter and he said to me, we're going to, uh, so they put the first case of the appeal where we're calling them all in, that's been put at hold while we're waiting for the Supreme Court ruling on the fees and my subject status. So he said, uh, Justice McGrath said, we're going to wait, Justice is a she actually, she said we're going to wait until the 31st of October and, and, and you can get uh, until we and contact you again about this case moving forward, all right? Now it's the 27th of October and I he's given it back to me uh, from the Supreme Court and I was talking to him on the phone and I said to him, it's, it's taken him from the 29th of September to the 27th of October to, um, uh, to the 27th of October to let me know this one letter to say to me that I haven't completed the form correctly. And he said, that one that you've done can be used for submissions. But he said, you need another one to submit for your application and that needs to be downsized to just to, just specifically only the ruling that you're seeking and nothing more. Now, that's going to be great. He says if you get that in today or tomorrow, um, then that will mean Monday will be the 31st. I'm hoping if I can get it in tomorrow that – so I'll get it in tomorrow before and then I'm hoping 
will get a quick ruling from the Supreme Court that they will accept my case before the 31st so that I can send that to the appeal court and the appeal court will give me another, um, uh, 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 what's that, stay or, or something for that case. So that case is still sitting there. That case is sitting there. But we've, it, it's just evolving and evolving while you're in the courts. I'm learning so much. So this is what you've got to do. Is you've got to get in there and start learning how to do it, what to do. Now, we've all stumbled along. I've had a lot of help. I've had Maxine. I've had Jody. I've had Sharon. I've had Brent. I've had, um, who else? But Diane, all the Oreo team. And I've had uh, uh, David Higgs. I've had a lot of people behind the scenes that don't want to be up here. They send me pieces uh, if they think that it's something that I need and it always is something that I need. So a lot of people involved so you can get this little group going. So um, I'm going to now, so everybody knows what's going on there, okay? So let's keep going. The battle is the Lord's. So I'm going to look at the messages that we've got here. We can see you copy and paste. You are the Echo Zoom meeting. Heard the airport. Right. So um, Betty, um, uh, Phil is saying to Betty Broford, I heard that the airport at the South Island is full of private jets from those going to Antarctica. Now, we're going to have to do a video on this Antarctica thing because I've got many, many, many laws to show you that during my court case, now if you enter a case in England or you enter a case in Scotland or Northern Ireland, when you start getting in the courts, you're going to see all the law changes that they've made to destroy the Commonwealth and to put us under um, uh, the Guru Nanak. So they're trying to put us under the Guru Nanak and Gita and Allah. That's what they're trying to do. And you'll find all the laws that they've changed. So we're going to have to have a video on this, but not today. Betty Broford says, yes, it goes back to World War I, World War II, Hitler, who said, Hitler set it up in Antarctica. And someone just mentioned a ship that's just been discovered. It just resurfaced. There was a ship that sank down and it's called, oh, my goodness. Oh, it should be on my thing now. I'll have a look if I can see it. I don't know if I'll be able to see it. I'll go to my um, history and I'll see if I can see it. Now, there's a ship. Uh, the Guru, Anak, Supreme Court. Oh, my goodness, all the stuff that I go and look at. Many, many, many. Ah, there's a ship called the Endurance. So you can all go and have a look at that if you want to go and look at that. That ship just resurfaced in the Antarctic, and I think it's a message to everybody. I think everyone can see. I think it's a message. Uh, that, so, uh, what did I just call that ship, Jody? The Endurance. The Endurance were a group of people, and you have to go and research all their names. They went to the Antarctica. And they sunk that ship, and I'm thinking they sunk it deliberately. They sat on the Antarctica, and they were down there for a few days. I believe they were pretending that they were stuck down there when, in fact, they were mapping it. They would have been doing all sorts down there and not telling anybody, and then apparently they were rescued. That ship was sunk, and it just resurfaced. It just resurfaced. Um, it was just resurfaced in March 2022. So there's many, many, many signs going on. So that ship resurfaced in March 2022. We know there's a huge war going on and it ain't going on over in Russia. The war's going on in the Pacific. Now, Russia's turned up in Antarctica. Um, um, Ukraine's turned up in Antarctica. China's turned up in Antarctica. And Jacinda Ardern has turned up in Antarctica. 
this ship has just surfaced, so that's the signal. That's the signal. The, the endurance has surfaced. That's the signal. And that's what they're all fighting over is Antarctica, Zealandia, that they've renamed OAT of Hoha, which I'm going to do another video on that. And they're saying that um, Putin wants to veto all of their claims. And I understand. So there's a huge... Where they are is called the heavenly realm. They created a heaven on this earth. They all function. They, they are God on earth. And that's why we got this Supreme Court. And they're all supposed to govern under the 1688 Bill of Rights and under Almighty God. They're all supposed to govern us and they're not supposed to drag us into their wars where they are continuously fighting over land and countries. That's what they do. They fight over land and countries and resources. And we are not even in the equation. We're not. And don't even try and get there because you won't you haven't, unless you've got the ancestry, you've got to have the smarts, you've got to have the ancestry and all of those things if you haven't got there. But what we've got to do is realise our status down here on the earthly realm that they give us the power to enter their heavenly realm and say, hey, what are you doing with us while well, you're fighting up there over your lands and your resources and all of that? What are you doing to us, murdering us and blooding us and doing all of that when we're just the innocent people trying to be with our families and live our lives and you're dragging us around? Because we're not fighting over it. We're happy with our little piece of land and our little house. That's what we're happy with, maybe a farm here and there. So, so they're battling over that. We've got our own battle going on. We've got to watch what they're doing, but we also got to know that we're not able to control what they're doing. You're not going to be able to stop them if they decide that they're going to scoop New Zealand up and give it to America or they're going to scoop New Zealand up and give it to India. It looks to me like... They've scooped England up and they've given it to India. That's what they've done. Because Rishi Sunak says on his program, he, he already said, he said that you can't expect to spend all this money and not have to pay it back. Where did all the money come from? They created this COVID. All the people that are in finance are foreigners. They created this COVID. They gave, they spent billions and trillions of dollars. America, three trillion dollars, four trillion dollars. England, trillions of dollars. New Zealand, trillions of dollars. Where do you think the money came from? And so suddenly, we've been sideswiped. The Queen Elizabeth has done exit stage left, and. Um, if God and the old, right here, let's go down to what they're saying. That doesn't mean we should follow, so he should protect us under the oath of allegiance, exactly. King Charles said he would be defender of all faiths and vowed to protect diverse cultures and religions. He protects them under the 1688. We're going to have to have this. Who's saying that? Who wants to speak? Right, anyone can speak. I'll have a rest. Can I ask you, I'm pretty... Hey. Um, so just talk to me like I'm five, right? Yeah. But it sounds to me like um, you, you're worried that because the new Prime Minister of uh, England, because he's got Indian heritage and may have sworn to a different god, that all of a sudden England belongs to India. Well, and I thought I thought all he was doing was swearing to his higher, you know, his higher power, which everyone is entitled to their own higher power, to uphold the laws of England. Like he, instead of swearing on a Bible, he's you know swore to whatever God, but that 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 God holds him to 
upholding the laws of England. No, because he didn't say he anything didn't, about giving it to India. He, he well, he, he, he. If, if, well, first of all, it, first of all, we should be clear about um, the truth of people's nationalities and citizenship, and where does all that come from? So what it what it comes down to is that um, you have to be when you're born in a country, you should be born to four grandparents that are born to that country, and then after that, your two parents born to that country, and then after that, um, you born to that country. That makes you a national of that country. Now, it's not saying that anybody doesn't belong there. What it's just saying is that it takes a certain amount of generations for you to be allegiant to that country. Because right now we've got an Iranian in the New Zealand Parliament. She's born to Iran and she's in the executive position, the, the top executive position so of what Parliament. what I'm saying is that someone can't emigrate to a country and have allegiance to that country, be nationalised, accept all the, the rights and the responsibilities of citizenship to that country, do you well, think that their allegiance still must lie with their ancestral home? Well, you didn't let me finish. Yes. If you let me finish, yes. I would be able to tell you because I didn't finish. So I was explaining Sorry. it to you. Right. So um, now, now it, after those, now that Iranian that's in our parliament and then Iran just recently declared war on England, right? And England and New Zealand, we're all part of the Commonwealth. Now, that Iranian person who sat in the top executive, um, um, the executive, she was born of Iranian parents and she was born in Iran. You are the nationality, not the citizenship. You are the nationality of both of your parents. Oh, okay. And yeah. so who who is she going to be allegiant to? Is she going to be allegiant and is she going to be able to kill her own uh, people over in Iran? No. So she, there's a dilemma. She's got to leave Parliament. So when you've got... It's a conflict of interest. It's a conflict of interest. It's a conflict of interest. It's a conflict even to God, to their very being, their very who they are, because you're asking them to kill the DNA, the people, the land, to come from so they don't go. Yes, Sharon? Just, just my point of view, if you're swearing allegiance to the Quran or any of those other Bibles, then shouldn't it stand to reason that they're going to follow those Bibles? They're not going to follow our King James Bible. They're going to follow... Their Bible, as you say, Kate, and all of it is filled up with the decapitation if you say a bad word about them. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that they've got the sole ability to, like, send a country to war or to change laws. Like, there's parliament, right? Oh, hang on. They, well, can't, they can't England, do it themselves. England's already got a prime minister that comes from India. <laughs> The Prime Minister can't make the laws himself, right? The Prime Minister yeah, is well, the of a political party. Well, hang on, New Zealand now has a Prime Minister who doesn't even obey the laws and makes her own. So what do you think England will do? Well, What do you mean she doesn't obey the laws? What, she well, well, she doesn't well, obey. Jacinda Ardern doesn't make the laws, right? The Parliament does. Oh, well, yes, she all does. Right, does right, obviously. right, I want to answer here. All right, it's my turn. It's always my turn because it's the Kate Floss show. So, uh, right, so I just want to let Chris... Uh, stay with this bit about nationality, right? So, um, I, because I'm a dual citizen, so I, I live in Thailand, right? And I have Thai citizenship. In the and I've been here for um, 35 years, married and have a child here. Uh, in in all the other countries, the criteria is this: that if you have a dual child, when they get to 18, they have to choose which country they're going to be allegiant to. And that becomes their core nationality. Now, in the event that I commit a crime in this country, or if this country goes to war against my country, it's in their law that they reserve the right 
to remove my citizenship. See, citizenship can be removed, but nationality can't. You get the nationality of your parents, but you can apply for citizenship. It is not the same. So um, your citizenship can be removed at any time and you can be sent back to the origin of your original national status, all right? Now, uh, Rishi has got, he's got an African Indian mother and he's got an Indonesian father and he swore his oath to, um, he swore his oath not, uh, according, I'm not sure whether he swore to Gita or whether he swore to the Guru Anik. And the first thing, the first thing that he did when he took his, his office was he made a telephone call to India. Now, the English Prime Minister, the first thing they do is call Northern Ireland, Scotland, and New Zealand, and Australia, the Commonwealth countries. They're the first calls that they make. And then they go and call all the other Commonwealth countries. But he didn't. His first call was into India. The second thing, what did he do? He went to, I think he must be the Guru Anak because I, I don't know, if, I don't think he's Sikh, but he went to visit his religious leader and he made, um, he made um, ceremonies with his religious leader. And so his allegiance is, there's no question where his allegiance lies. And he has announced many, many times that he will take care of the world's most vulnerable people. He ain't going to take care of England. He ain't going to take care of the Commonwealth. Now, that you're saying that I heard, Eliza, I'll just say this bit. You're saying, well, it's not the Prime Minister that makes the laws. But you know what happens? People get sacked from their jobs. Now, um, uh, uh, Goritz Garamang, an Iranian, she made an announcement. She went over to Australia. She met with a Green Party MP and she made arrangements for Burut Buchoni, another Iranian socialist. She made arrangements for him to be taken off the refugee island. And she, well, I can't say she assisted, but she was involved with meeting with the PMs and she met Burut at the airport and he was an illegal refugee. She met him at the airport. She flew him down to Christchurch. She let him enter, and then she made an announcement right there in the airport that she would spend her time in Parliament making sure that the 450 refugees on Manas Island that Australia had refused to give them to New Zealand. Australia said they're too dangerous and we're not going to send them, let them into New Zealand. She made an announcement at the airport that she was going to get these 450 refugees into New Zealand. When they got the second term, she has organised that they are to come 150 per year up until all of them have been given nationality in New Zealand. So that's, that's just one person. Now, when you've got a whole group of them, and that is why our 1688 Bill of Rights says you have to swear this oath to the 1688, which says foreigners aren't allowed to govern over us. So it's not good saying that they don't have power because they do have power when they're in the parliament. They go around and they make deals with if you've got 60% of your parliament like we have that are ethnic minorities, the ethnic minorities are no longer ethnic minorities. They become one group and then they become 75% or 60% of the parliament parliamentary voice over your 40% English parliamentary voice. And you can't win. And so that's why New Zealand is in such a mess. And it's gonna it's happening in England. So it's not as simple as what you think, Eliza. I'll let you speak now, dear. Sorry. 
Eliza. Yeah, sorry, I was just taking all of that in. Um, I don't know what else to say. Like, <laughs> you were talking about the white slaves. What what do you mean white slaves? Like, I know that there was, originally there was a lot of um, uh, prisoners, obviously, in England uh, that, you know, got moved to Australia um, to begin the colonisation. But what... What what slaves you talk about? I know that there was a lot of you know white immigration to Australia and New Zealand, but what slaves? I don't understand the slaves. Well, um, you know you can put pretty words on things, but they still mean the same thing. The fact of the matter is, well, no people actively like wanted to come out here well, for new lives. Well, you didn't let me finish again. Um, if you ask me a question, if you ask me a question, you have to let me answer it because um, you, that what you said to me, speak to me like I'm a five-year-old and all the people that are on here have been with me a long time so they know all the histories but you're new so I'm just going to help you a wee bit because there's a lot of other new ones as well. So a lot of people don't know our history. Now, the fact of the matter is is that the, um, the, um, uh, the, the convicts, that were sent to Australia in the beginning were not sent to any of the other countries. They were only, that was, Australia was a penal colony. That's what it was originally called, penal colony. And what they used to do over in Ireland was that they were scooping up all of the um, people that committed minor crimes, stealing a loaf of bread and putting them on ships and even stealing a loaf of bread or even speaking against the church could get you a seven-year sentence in Australia. That was the penal colony. They scooped them all up, put them on ships. Now, they were slaves because they were chained to the ships and they, many of them died in the ships, but they were mostly all males and very few females were sent. And the criteria for going there originally was males. And um, um, so that was the beginning of it. But, however... Those missionaries and the leaders that were over there, they then went over to the islands and then over to New Zealand and they started making deals with the natives to buy up all their lands and they really did trick them and I would consider those to be colonists. Now, the chief Tamati Wakanene, this is, he's very, very important. Chief Tamati Wakanene joined together with Queen Victoria because they wanted to get all of these people out. And so they joined together in all those lands that the missionaries had stolen from all of the natives. Tamati Wakanene and Queen Victoria scooped it all up and confiscated the whole lot. And they opened up a court and they put in laws and then they all those lands, every single piece of land, all the natives, all the Anglos, everyone had to go into the court and prove how they came to uh, came to acquire that land and how much they paid for it and what the boundaries were, and that was all done through courts of law. Now, Tamati Wakanene and the natives, all of them were countries with no armies, no hospitals, no schools, no, nothing, and they wanted to be a part, they wanted to be a nation. It's absolute nonsense that Queen Victoria colonised anyone. America was fighting to take these countries. They'd thrown England out. They were fighting to take them. And Queen Victoria also, who was the German Queen Protestant, Protestant, she was trying to stop it all. Tamati Wakanene, they joined together and um, they got all these colonists out. And then they gave us the 1688 Bill of Rights, which was an immigration protection document. And the, the natives of, of New Zealand signed this document to say, bring your ships in and the Anglo people that were brought in were used as human shields to protect them from the barbarous religions that were taking them over and stealing all their lands. We were actually brought in as human shields. And uh, the, the criteria, they were giving free passage for um, 
children as young as 10 years old. They went to all the rural areas of Scotland, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Germany. They went to all the rural areas and they scooped up all these kids. And, and then they said to their mothers that they would go to all of these countries on these ships and that they would be given a piece of land. And when they arrived there, the, but the piece of land had to be paid for and then they, the, the land was worth nothing because there was nothing there. So they increased the price of the land. There are documents talking about it where the land that was only worth maybe $100, they increased the price to maybe $2,000 and they actually said in these documents that they did that to make the Anglo people work for 30 years. Uh, usually the lifespan at that time was around about 40 to 50 years old. And so they made it that you would have to work for 30 years in order to own that piece of land that wasn't worth what they had worked for. And they really were white slaves. They dumped these kids on the streets of Australia, Sydney, Auckland, and they had no parents and they just dumped them there and then they arrested them for being vagabonds. When they were arrested for being vagabonds, they had to go and work in the workhouses and work on the road gangs and work on the railway gangs. And the payment for doing that was, um, if they were lucky, three meals a day. So let's just be clear about the difference between the colonists and the white slaves that were brought in to as human shields to protect these countries from the colonists that were the religions of the Catholic, the Jew. Actually, it, was, it wasn't the Islamists. It was the Catholics and the Jews. The Islamists were taking Africa and they were taking all those other countries. So that's what they were doing. India was trying to take China. And so there was this huge battle going on all around the world. So the Anglo people with Queen Victoria and Tamati Wakanana were brought in as white slave human shields to build their nations. They put a lock on these countries in the Constitution of 1852 that no lands could be bought or sold, no allodial, no pure title lands could be bought or sold. All you were allowed to buy was a paper title, which really means nothing in law, to be honest. And so they said you could have that. They locked it up for 200 years or for, come for a 99-year lease, apparently. I'm just hearing about this now. Now, um, now what happened? Now, in, in around about 1975 or later on, they removed that um, forbiddance of the sale of the pure title lands. And they went round and met up with all of the natives. They scooped them all up. They separated us in this colonization bullshit. And then they made new agreements with them in the United Nations behind our backs. And now they're trying to force us under these human rights laws and force us under these other laws. But where is it going to end? Because you're going to end up under the Guru Anak, or you're going to end up under the Quranic laws, or you're going to end up under all these laws because the United Nations has um, not put any protections for the Protestant people. There's protections for homosexuals, there's protections for Muslims, there's protections for refugees, there's protections for um, the Jewish nations and people, there's protections for the Hindus and all of those, and, and voila, there's not one single protection in there for the Protestant people. And why didn't we get any protections? Because we already had our 1688 Bill of Rights, but what they're trying to do is to move us into this other place where we don't have a group. We don't, we don't, we're not seen as vulner vulnerable people. We're seen as well, so they've made up the story as the dictators. So, yes, we were differently, Eliza, white slaves sent to build these countries. Now that they've been built, they're ready to get rid of us, but not only get rid of us, take over the origins that we originally came from as well.
to put us back into white slavery. It's awful. Okay, well, uh, Kate, I've been, I have been watching you for a little while. I, I previously thought that you were just fighting for your rights. Um, but listening to you today, I just think that you're a homophobic racist and that your pathetic white women who follow you are all pathetic racists. You view everything through the lens of racism and distort history just to suit yourself because you think you're all victims. And I think it's disgusting. It's what do you think racism. about Hitler? It's, it, it, yes, it is. You've got, to look, you've got to look at the religions, the man-made religions. Once you get your mind around the man-made religions, this is where all this corruption and world... Christianity is just over. another man-made religion. You know, it was it was created in the Middle East. Yes, it's it's another religion. When you there's difference between spirituality and religions. Look at I believe there's a God. There's a higher being. You got to look at nature. It's all there. It's it, it, you look around you. You look at the human body. There's got to be a higher mind. There's an Almighty God. Of some. Yes, but, that's, sure. but Kate's not talking about anything like that. Kate's just talking about, oh, I'm white and I think I'm going to be outnumbered by brown people. That's no, what I'm I, no, I, I never said that. That is a lie. That's, what I said is, was. You may not have said those No, names, I did not. What I said was, that. don't you dare say I said something that I didn't say. What I said was is that I don't want to be under their laws. I don't want to be under their laws. Neither does Sharon, and she's not white, she's black. Show yourself, Sharon. Yeah, I've seen Sharon. Right, so she's not white at all. She's black. So and so there's Maxine. Maxine's black as well. We're we're not we just we don't want to be under their laws. We want to be free. From their laws, and we are most certainly not racist. Uh, they can nah. come to our country. We only have a problem with them coming. Don't rule us under your rules. Right. Respect that they're not. Respect the country that you come to. We're not allowed to go yeah. into China and say we're Christians. Yeah. We get yes, there you are. Off. You're we're not allowed to buy land in China. You're not allowed to buy land in right. China. <laughs> Who cares about China? You know, who's it doesn't, matter. it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is they've got rules for their own countries. Why can't the Protestants have their little place? Right. Yeah. But we do. No, we, we don't. don't. We don't. It's being taken. Really? And so do you still celebrate Christmas? Do you still celebrate Easter? It's not none of your business. We'll no, celebrate I, what no, we I want. Don't. We want to. I don't. I don't. <laughs> but you're, you're given holidays to celebrate those things. Now, Aren't you Eliza, to celebrate Christmas. I, Eliza, I want to take all the Queen's birthday holiday. About it. If you're a Christian, you're not allowed to speak about it. You're not allowed to celebrate Jesus. No, not, not what? In, other, in other countries. They said no. um, in America. Not in, America. Not in other countries, but here, right, in Australia I'm and New Zealand. I'm talking in New Zealand, Eliza. You cannot. So you can't celebrate Christmas in New Zealand. Ela Eliza. About, you can't go to Mass. You can't go to church. That, that, that will change, unfortunately. It will change. Oh, that, it will change. Eliza, that's my yeah, turn. Well, my turn to get my show. Kate Flosho, I want to stop. I want to say something. Kate Flosho, uh, Eliza, I want to ask you this question. Why in what I, I, I don't understand your thought processes. Why in Asia? Why in, um, in Saudi Arabia? Why in Iran? Why in China? Why in Thailand? All these countries. Why are they permitted to have laws that are specific and, and absolute for their religions, for their race, for their nationality? Why are they allowed to have those laws in their countries and for us to have it in our countries is illegal? Do you know that none of those countries take refugees? The only countries that are being sent refugees are to the Anglo countries. The, 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 the payoff that they made was that um, they would, before they're allowed to come to the Anglo countries, they have to spend two years, I think it is, 
in in another country that is not their own. So they that's the payoff. They ship them to places like Thailand, Cambodia, Saudi Arabia. They will take them for two years. And then after that, they're scooped up and permanently put in Anglo countries. That's because none of the Arabian countries will take them. Now, these refugees and everybody should be shipped to countries that are of a similar culture, a similar way of life, and a similar um, uh, familial heritage so that they can survive. What is happening is they're scooping them up, putting them into our countries, they're not able to survive, and then we, it, 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 we are having to pick up the shortfall of all of that. And we don't have the laws to control all of these things. So I'm saying to you, I want to ask you this question, Eliza. How come they're allowed to have all of their laws and we're not allowed to have these laws in our country because we're racist, bigoted, um, evil people? What, what, what's your answer to that, Eliza? Well, I think that you're just talking rubbish because... <laughs> No, the, the countries that you're speaking about, China, do, do you want to go live there? Like people escape well, these countries. I, I, I they live over them, here. Right? And okay. so they, they, well, hang on, you, you, you wouldn't let me cut you off. Oh, so I'm sorry. If I could talk. Excuse me. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. So the countries that you're talking about, people are fleeing those countries, right? Why would you want to put them back into the same countries? And the thing is that we, we, I think Australia and the Commonwealth countries, we like to think of ourselves as a bit more humanitarian. No, we fucking don't. Not me. Yes, we are. I'm not. No, I know. I know you're not humanitarian. That's fucking obvious. I know that. That's clearly, clearly obvious. So what you what you really want is Australia and New Zealand to have white laws. No. That's that's a lie. Oh, that is that is. That, that, yeah, I that want them to want. have the same laws okay. as the other countries have. We wouldn't have. be able to function without immigration. We have to have immigration to function in Australia. It's not true. We don't import people. Yes, it's that's true. Not true. <laughs> no, it is true. About Thirty years ago, in our country, New Zealand. We were a first world. We were top for everything. Uh, we we had only a million people. You could count a million people in New Zealand. When I was growing up as a child, the education system was higher. The standard of living was higher. Yeah. My, my kids now I can't was to buy a house in Auckland. I've got to pay a million dollars to buy a house. Yeah, it's my, the same my kids could it's afford the same to buy everywhere. a house. In 18, okay, it's not just uh-huh. your poor Kiwis. It's everywhere. It's exactly the same everywhere. No, so I like in Thailand, Thailand they need in- immigration to build this, to do this. This is what you've just basically said. And if we also go back to Christianity, which you, we are a Christian nation, there is no doubt about that. New Zealand is a Christian nation. But you just said that you can't yeah. practice your As you said, we can't uh, celebrate Christmas. Let's just say, uh, if you're a Christian, you're not allowed to have nativity sets in uh, shop windows now. Yeah. That is obvious. We're not allowed to put those yeah. in on those because you might offend uh, the, the other the Muslim the other. Country or the Jewish yeah. community or whoever their Allah or the other God is. So people, uh, our Christianity is being and this and you, we are a Christian nation. That's what our country is founded on. Yeah. You are not allowed to ha- talk about. Uh, you say you celebrate Christmas. We all celebrate Christmas, but if the kids want to celebrate their religion, they are not allowed to because in yeah. they might. Uh, offend someone else so you really need to get your facts straight and I don't know what you're talking about we need immigration to build this country this country is falling backwards our education our kids are coming out of school illiterate not even being able to read and write anymore so where where is that going we're going being a Christian you know, country too. We're becoming a dumping away. ground for immigration. Yes, we are becoming a dumping ground, but we're going to have our kids. We're going to end up being a third world country in New we Zealand. We are. We're a third world. And our education system is slipping. Our, yeah. you know, this is what we're going our to be system. doing. What's that got to do with our immigration? It's so quite quite hard. Hard. How can you answer? What has that got to do with immigration? Because there's a couple of Indian kids in your class. Like there are a couple. How is that? That's got to. That's got to do with waving. We've got cities full of migrants in this country. Two million. Two million. What? Sorry. Immigrants in this country. We're we're oh not God, talking about um in my 
Well, I'm not talking, I'm not saying that they can't come because I'm, what I'm saying is that when they come, you that they have to allow a certain amount of generations. They respect the laws, otherwise they go to jail. Um, um, they don't actually. Um, but what no, I'm saying is that um, we we have laws. We have laws, and what I'm saying is that they should allow for a certain period of generations, a couple of generations for them to settle into our country, to get their roots into our country, to where they're, they're allegiant to our country, and we don't have to worry about them being in, in Parliament, making laws for so their, then? their oh. own countries. So the, the standard is in, in the, what I'm just looking at, in, in well, in some countries, in, in Saudi Arabia, the minute that you marry and have children, your children are, are not... Um, not ever considered to be nationals of that country ever again. That's why Muslims only marry Muslims and Jews only marry Jews because in the very deep sense of it, they believe that only the, that Saudi Arabian person, a Muslim, so must marry... white ethno-nationalists. With, with a, Is that how we can sum you up? White ethno-nationalists? Um, well, How do you know so much about that when you don't know history? Yeah, exactly. Like you, you, you're, you're talking a lot of all the stuff that comes out of obviously the modern what stuff. the and you, you, you don't know history. Like yeah. to know how we got here and how it is for us in New Zealand at the moment and how it is for the Commonwealth, you have to go back and have a look. We don't care what the colour they are, right. and that we just want to be safe in our own country. Right. And all we're asking. Considering I'm a, a Māori, that and and like the rest of us, you know, Māori or um, uh, Anglo's, that what our parents put into this country, and our grandparents, and that we want that respected. That's all. Like yeah, how got, you've got being you've got because most of them are coming in, they're getting, and, and it's done by our government. They're bringing these people in, and it's done by the UN. They're bringing people into New Zealand. They're they're putting them in positions, and they're positioning our country. This ain't about a race thing. This Who's is a they? fucking global, holy fucking war. Are you talking about like the new you, world order? You really need yeah. to go back in history and. <laughs> Oh, how did I oh, let it end? Mm -hmm. you know? um, It'll be that lot that was in that last. Yeah, time. I let him yeah. in. Yeah, that's probably yeah. Eliza's mate. I bet it's Eliza's oh. mate. I bet. I bet it's she's not one of them. Beg your pardon. I oh, might well, be she there. She doesn't know who they are. Then. Uh, oh no. But anyway, he's gone so now. I'm just looking at an article here that um, Auckland Smith and uh, Cowie's Christmas window display in the top five world with Macy's Christmas. I mean, yeah. it, honestly, it, it isn't displays. history. It, it's it's to talking go back about lovely history. Christmas displays. It's, it's never have a look at it. Nativity sets and things like that, you know, like you, they don't, they're not allowed to. Well, you're saying that um, the yes, other no. countries have laws. The other countries have laws to protect. Now you see, now you see, Saudi Arabia and all of the Islamic countries, they've got laws that it's the death penalty for being a homosexual. And unfortunately, almost all, 100% of their homosexuals have got AIDS. It's not that I'm against people with the AIDS. We've got people with AIDS in New Zealand. And I don't mind that we take care of our own New Zealand people that have got AIDS and are unfortunate enough, and they get their medicine. Do you know how much it costs to take care of a person who's on AIDS to keep them alive? It costs around about $3,000 or more a month to keep them on that medication. Now, all of the Islamic countries, um, it's illegal to be a homosexual and the penalty is apparently death, so they reckon. And... All the people that have got AIDS in those countries, they're not able to go and get medical care 
or governmental medical care because just to go and admit that they are homosexual and that they've got AIDS is the death penalty for them anyway. Their countries what, don't What's your like, point about that? I'm, like, I'm about what, to get there. Your point? So I'm yeah. about to get to that. So rather than... You don't than, like homosexuals? So no, rather than... Fine. No homosexuals? Rather, shut up. To homosexuals. Rather than... Jeez. I'm going to put you on mute. Rather than the United Nations get them to change their laws to be humanitarian and get them to change their laws to have a social sense of social justice and to get them to take care of their own people, let's be reminded that they are the richest countries in the world. Rather than do that, the United Nations says, oh, the Anglo countries are very welcoming. Let's scoop all of them up with all their aids and all of that and dump them in the Anglo oh countries that have got humanitarian laws and then our people have to pay. So I I don't think that that is why I believe that they should take care of their own and we take care of the, our own. And I think that the United Nations needs to start looking at those countries and putting pressure on them to change their laws to allow all of this humanitarian work to go on in their countries because... The Saudi Arabians are the richest countries. I think you would have been on Hitler's side, wouldn't you? I am. You would have been on Hitler's side. Certainly. Of course you are. Great man. Surprise, surprise. Great man. White nationalist Nazis. We should have. um, There's nothing wrong with being white. Well, Maxine's not white. She's black. So what are you going to call her? A black nationalist Nazi? There'll be so a you're name. basically, be a name. basically your national, your national socialist. What do you call the national socialist now? Oh, we, can drop there the, we, go. we have to drop the colour. So national so socialist. socialist. That's what I thought. That's what we are. But That's what do, I thought. But do you not think that those countries should, ch- why don't you think that they should change their laws to accommodate taking care of their people when they're so filthy, filthy, filthy rich swimming in their oil and their gold? Now, Oh, do I think Saudi Arabia is a horrible country in the way they treat their people is horrible? Absolutely. Not my fault. Not my fault, mate. No, not your fault. It's also no surprise that people want to escape that. Why do they 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 come to New Zealand and a lot of our people are are getting nothing compared to what they're getting? No, well, you you should. You should. And that's definitely something to complain about. Inequality, absolutely. Marzi, we've got to clean up our own backyard first before taking on all these others. Look at all the Māori yeah, that are in, yeah. in the, sleeping in the streets and unable yeah, to... There's only hard. one Māori school against every other kind of school that they're wanting to put up. They're wanting to put all the... the yeah, Samoan absolutely, those there. changes need to take place. Absolutely. Absolutely, those things need to take place in New Zealand and Australia and every other developed country. But, but who's going to pay for it all? Yeah. We're the taxpayers well, here, yeah, yeah. which... Uh, the, yeah, you mean, and you immigrants mean, that come in and start work, they pay tax too. No, 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 what, no, they're, no. they're taking Refugees, a lot more right? than what they're allowed to bring in their parents. They're allowed to put all their kids in the schools. They, they're actually taking a lot more than what they're paying. And, you know, they only have to be working in New Zealand. Uh, if they work in New Zealand for, like, 20 years, they can they, – they bring it – they're allowed – Four wives, and they have five children to each wife. Now, over here in Thailand, they have a law. If you have a child and you're not married to the man, then they say that you were irresponsible and you can't get extra benefits for that child if you're not married. So the people here are really careful about not getting pregnant before marriage. Now, that law doesn't apply in our country. And when you bring the these people, like any of the religions that allow four wives, four wives, five kids per wife, that's the minimum that they have. You've got 20 kids there, and that husband doesn't pay for any any of them. And he, he even can live in his country over where he is. Do you have is. one example of this, one example that I can look up? Like just one. Of what? Well, of, of one person coming out here, bringing his five wives and what that makes it, 25 children, that he's allowed to have five wives in New Zealand. Can you just he's, give me one he, example? He, 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 he doesn't need to. That is my point. He doesn't need to marry them in New Zealand. 
in New Zealand, you can have children, you can be with a man for two years and have children with that man. And if that man leaves you, then the government in their social justice will take care of those children and take care of that woman, right? And so nowadays they've learned that if they don't marry the woman, because they're only allowed to marry the first wife is the only ceremony in any of these countries that is the proper legal one is the first wife gets the marriage certificate. Yeah. The other three wives go and do a ceremony at the temple. And there are laws over here that you have to take care of, wife two, three, but the main wife is the one that's the big hoo-ha. So those, those subsequent marriages wouldn't be recognised in New Zealand law? They don't need to be recognised in New Zealand law because all of those children, all those three other wives go and claim that their husband is no good to them and they're all permitted to, to collect benefits for those children. So all he's got to do is walk away. The, the fact of the matter is when you've got four wives, you don't stay in the house with each wife 24-7. So you walk away, she goes down to the benefits and says, my husband's gone and I've got, but I'll tell you, they, they never, ever leave their wives. And so what he gets is he gets four wives all and all their children all paid by the New Zealand government. Just one example of this happening. Do you have one example or is this just all I'm, fear? I'm, like, I don't need to. Example. I'm just saying that's the law. Is that the law or is not that not the law? Yeah, that's, that might, yeah, all okay. I'm so saying that that's the law. The law is the law. That's the law. You can't prove it's happening. You're just you giving can't prove it. I can prove can I, um, that is the law. Yes, no, Sharon. It's been happening. So, you know, the, the thing I wanted to say was being part of Māori, um, I identify with Māori. But the thing that's happening with our country is all the immigrants are coming in. They get top jobs, they get houses. In the meantime, we have our own people, Māori and Pākehā, sleeping on the sides of roads with kids. How is that justified? It's not. It's not. Yeah. The government should be taking care of all of these people. Why? Why? Our kids will be working forever. Why? They'll be working until they're 90. So kick them all out. Just kick them all out. Yeah. No, nobody wants to kick them out. Nobody wants to kick them out. But if they come into the country, what they should do, they should wait for a couple of generations before they get to govern over us and give their children time. Yeah, but that's to... two different things. You're talking about governing as opposed to just existing. Well, my original so... show was talking about that, well, but it's been sideswiped into the and you cars. did that. Our, our people aren't existing in cars, all in the bloody past. How yeah. is that existing, living off nothing? Most of them yeah, were right. out of jobs. They had no food for their kids. So, right? Christian New Zealand. But I aren't, so I, I don't understand. So what sort of social benefits are available for Maori in New Zealand? Is it the same as for immigrants or what? No. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They can. Like you said, they... Immigrants are getting more, aren't they? Not the getting Anglo money. people. No, but the no, immigrants get more no. because the immigrants get, um, the immigrants get more because the they, it costs $300,000 per immigrant, they do get a house and they do get it fully furnished. But I'll tell you what they do get that New Zealand Maori don't get is that they get free tutoring. They have vans that pick them up from their homes and drive them to tutoring centres and they get free tutoring uh, in English every day after English. school. Yep. But isn't that a good thing? Yeah, and not only that, not only that, the New Zealand government also has to pay for them to keep up their education in their own language. And the New Zealand government also has to pay for them to have um, community centres that are specifically and only for their people and their religion and their culture. And that's all paid for by us and it's a separatist policy. So, yes, we are, they are getting 
way more while our kids are failing in school and are not even able to pass their high school education anymore because all our money, so if they were just coming in, they got a house, they got a job and let them go and figure it out on your own, that would be fine. But no, all their support services is draining all the money from our health care, draining all the money from our education. So we don't have enough money to pay teachers. We don't have enough money for our own doctors. And it, 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 it our people are suffering greatly. The rents yeah, and, and the rates. Because... <laughs> I think um I think it has to be said too that that we're all pawns like they're they're as much pawns in this as we are yes um so you have a you have a, a um you know the, our government our government well, we are we we're basically all pawns they're being used as pawns because when you're looking at the um the the groups behind all the um, so the tutoring, the groups behind, or the housing that gives them housing. Um, when you go and, and look into their boards and stuff, it all goes back to religions. The, a lot of those, um, the boards and the trusts of, of of the because yeah, there's, there's a many. Um, uh, what do you call them? They flip in or anything that has to do with the refugees are run by the uh, groups get um, contracts to do all these things. And those groups get big money. So the refugees are pawns as well. And then we've only got a certain amount of pool or, uh, pool of money in New Zealand. So it, it appears to many New Zealanders that um, Māori refugees, you know, a lot of money is going on to them. Is, is going into these places like billions. Our debt has gone up in the last three years by billions. Um, and but we are, we're just pawns, and so are the refugees. And and there is a bigger reason, but it is being manipulated, but still New Zealanders, and that's why we 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 had enough and we want we want this because. Uh, what our standard what, of living? What, what, do, you, sorry, what do you actually want? Like, what is the outcome? We want the, we want this law to be able to have, be protected under these protection. laws. Protection, protection from their laws. From, from, from what? Their they laws. can have their laws. From their from, laws. From laws. Yeah. Who's them? Who's them? All their the yeah. religious yeah. laws. All religious laws. All religious laws. All, all religious laws. Religious laws. Religious so laws. you don't want to. So you think that if you don't do something about this, you're going to have to wear what, uh, hijabs and be executed or no, what you're worried about Islamic anyway. law? That well, won't happen. So what, what, I will not what wear religious laws, religion. though. But the news, not going to be, but what religious laws? You need to look into their you laws, like, You need to go and study it and look into what, their What, Sharia law? Is that what you want me to study? Yeah, go, law? go yeah. look at it. Go look at it. I know, I know what Sharia law. law is. It's fucking abhorrent. They, they, Sharia law is yeah. abhorrent. They can bring that here. Yeah, they like, can. No, they can't. Can. Yes, yes, can. Eliza, okay. No, Eliza, no, Eliza. They can. They've done it in Australia. I'm going to show you something. Right? Oh, really? So here. who's being punished under Sharia law? The, they've got, do you know that they have who? coppers outside? In outside Canada. When's the last person that lost their hand for stealing? So here is the, right, here you go, Eliza. I'll just show you because you want to show me well, your you proof. Know, so here. <laughs> so, of course I do. All right. Of course I do. So here you go. Look, this I is the think, new, new Zealand police. Happen. Be quiet. This is the new New Zealand police uniform. So here it is. It's the hijab. So the New Zealand police, there's no crown, there's no um, uh, oath of allegiance. This is the new New Zealand police uniform. The head of the New Zealand police is an Indian Muslim that's been in New Zealand for 20 years. She lied to get into the police force and not... And she's been in the police force for so many years, and now she's brought into the police force the hijab. So don't tell me that I don't need to be going under my protections. 
because we do need to be going under our protections because this New Zealand is a very small country and this is where we he headed. This is the new police that we're going to be looking at in New Zealand. This is what they've got to sign. This is New Zealand. Here's the New Zealand police. This is a woman with the New Zealand police uniform on with a gun in her hand and a freaking hijab on. Don't dare tell me that this is not what we've got to look forward to if we don't start saying something about this. Because these are the facts. These are the facts. And um, if you don't want to see that, this is what, um, this is the it's, new. It's an elective part, right? It, it, like, it's an elective part. It was included as part of the uniform that a police officer can wear. Like, they don't have to. It's, it's elective. So that Muslim women, women can feel comfortable and being so elected. You know what? Elected. You know what? What so you need to do? So it's elective. It, you it's go and live. I don't see. I don't see the understand the problem with with it making elective. Like if you were forcing everyone to wear hijab, then yeah, that would be a problem. But they're not. Well, they're, they're just, just saying that this is a, a, a free part to wear of the money. police uniform that Muslim women can wear. Okay. No. No, because they, yes. they're not, they are supposed to swear an oath of allegiance to Almighty God and uphold those protections. Now, Islamic law under Allah has a law that if you speak against them, the penalty is decapitation. And there have been people in England, teachers in England, people even here in Thailand who have been decapitated uh, for speaking against them. So when they wear that as a police force, they have they swear their allegiance to Allah and our 16... No, they don't. They swear their allegiance to... What, they swear their allegiance to the country they, under their they, God's our eye. Countries, we, our countries are not under Allah's eye. They have countries under Allah's eye. Ours are under Almighty God. And I think that, um, you know, it, it, I don't know why you're in my group because you should know that that's what my group is about. And what I just say to people, because I have to go in a minute, because I have to pick up my son. Sorry, Norm. Um, but what I'm just going to say to you is this. I am fighting to keep our 1688 Bill of Rights. And our 1688 Bill of Rights says that no foreigners are permitted to govern over us, nor their ecclesiastical courts, nor their religious laws are permitted to govern over us. The only way we can be governed is by acts of parliament that are voted in by us. And so they, if they, and we have the right to free speech and we have the right to no cruel and unusual punishment. And if they're swearing allegiance to a God or a religion, that does not uphold their rights, then yes, they can come to work, but no, they should not be permitted in our parliament or in our thing because um, it's just it's 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 a very um, quick jump to where it is what you want to go. But I will just go back to Norm, uh, and so that's all I'm going to talk about that with you, Eliza, because we we will not be discussing this anymore because everybody in my group knows what I'm here for. I'm here to get myself put back under the protections of my subject law and they can all do what they want. But this is what I want for my family and for my mm -hmm. descendants to be put under the safety of their Protestant laws. And if that's not something that you want, will you go and put a hijab on or you go and um, uh, join the Jewy people or whatever it is that you want. Um, but this is what I want for me and I'm entitled to that, just like they're entitled to theirs. I'm entitled to monks. That's what this country was built on. And uh, so I wanted to show to, um, so that's all I'm going to be saying about that anymore. Now, I wanted to show this to Norm because Norm, it was, Norm, uh, I, you've just come on, right? Have you, Norm? Yeah, sorry, I only just found you. Oh, uh, did you, did you not find us? I did put it up there earlier for you. Um, so I just, we did, we got a bit off topic. 
And so unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to post this video on YouTube. So the video has been wasted, which is uh, a bit of a bugger. Um, but anyway, we've got Norman here. So we'll just um, let Norm, I'll just uh, put it in here, Norm. So Norm, I did hear from the Supreme Court and um, the Supreme Court, um, I'll just quickly tell it to you. The submission that I made to the Supreme Court, I had put in the entire document and um, the Supreme Court just sent me back a letter today and they said, that document that you put in is too long. And they said, that's what you put in for submissions. But for the actual application for the Supreme Court, we only just want you to put in the laws and the outcome that you want in a short sentence. So, but we were talking together and we all thought together that this was a, um, uh, but this was okay because had I have only done that, they probably wouldn't know what I was talking about. But now they've read all of that. So when they do get the watered down one the, with just the main points, they'll know exactly what those are talking about. So he said, you've just got to flip into me that one. And then he said, we'll look at that one. And then we, within a few days, we'll let you know if we accept you or not. And then he says, if we accept you, we will immediately send that um, document to the respondents and then we will immediately, um, the case will just go through. So the good thing of it, of it is that we wouldn't have to do um, submissions so that everything would be done. So all we've got to do is try and get accepted, Norm. Well, that's brilliant because it sounds like the judge is trying to help you along the way, giving you advice, telling you what to do. So, yes, yeah, so all you need to do is concentrate uh, what, what it is, you, the point you're trying to make, declaration you want and um, put it to them. That sounds awesome. No, that's what I'm feeling like. I was thinking that um, they could have just put it in and said, no, we're not accepting this, and they didn't. They, they, yeah, yeah, they said, just fix this up. It's not followed the procedure correctly. So they said, fix this yeah. up, and then um, <laughs> we're going to take, well, it didn't say we're going to take you, but they, we're going to consider it, but they've read all the other one. And they didn't boot me out, so I'm I'm feeling quite good that we're still in there. Well, I think so too. It almost feels like the judges are kind of on your side in some way. I mean, the, the lengths that they seem to be going out of their way to help you and, and give you suggestions of, of what you need to be doing correctly, it's awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right, Norm. And um yeah. and and did you manage to um watch the um David Hicks and Kate Floss video? It's just the, yeah, I did. yeah, yeah, and then he yeah. made it really clear. He said, "What you're trying to do is get out of your citizen's status oh, your and into status, your subject yeah. protections, and then once you get that place of strength, you can work from there rather than working right. from the weaker citizen status." So that's what he. I thought he was really brilliant. Yeah, I thought he was good too. He defined those two different jurisdictions very well. I thought, yeah, no, he did well. Yeah, I'm going to try and get him in for another um, talk, actually. And we might just do a talk with just you and me and him, Norm, because not, no offence to the other Oreo team's members, who Eliza is not an Oreo team member because she clearly is deeply against anything we're doing, so there's no point in joining her to the Oreo team. But... Yeah, well, Eliza needs to wake up a little bit and realise that once you let these individuals and these particular factions in the door, it becomes a very slippery slope. And it's, you know, it's only a matter of time when they inch and turn the temperature up and next thing you know, we're all running around and bloody who knows what, you know. So, yeah, it's very careful. I, I, you know, I'm, 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 sorry? It's the, you know, the boiling of the frog syndrome. Exactly, that's right. What's the boiling no, of the matter. frog syndrome? Oh, got to be protected. Well, the boiling of the frog syndrome is is that you know they don't they don't dump the 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 goals on us straight away. They incrementally put them into place and they raise the temperature slowly so that the frogs don't realise that they're being boiled until it's too late. Yeah. Pretty much is the, the analogy. Yeah, that's mm. right. And then we've just been saying here, look at this. Uh, I've just been finding a bunch of new stuff, but we're not going to, we already talked about it, but you've come late, but I'll just quickly show it to you because I've got to go. But we were talking about how over in England, their oaths of allegiance, because we know that 
when they swear this oath that they are upholding the 1688 Bill of Rights and the protections that that affords us, that we get to vote in our parliament, that foreigners can't govern over us, that there'll be no cruel punishments, that there'll be no forfeiture of our person or forfeiture of our land that we have, all those laws that protect us. But the biggest protection is that we have the right to go to the court and call in parliamentarians about questions of law. Uh, we've got that right. And um, so that's why here. So everyone had to swear by Almighty God. So Almighty God was like the one God that had a few sets of rights that everybody could follow. So you had your Muslims, right. you had your Jews, you had your Hindus, you had your gurus, and then all of them had their own sets of rights and, and customs that they want to live by, but then they make this one set that we can all be protected by, all of us, and it's just a very few set of rights that we should not be treated cruelly and I think it's something that we can all love. It doesn't matter who we are or what colour we are or what religion we are. We should all be fighting to keep these protections. So it just happens that it, it happens to be an English king, but it doesn't have to be. It can be just, you know, the king of almighty God, the king of kings. So it doesn't actually. But anyway, for this one, it's the allegiance to his majesty, the king, and the judicial oath is that I will do the right to all manner of people, which means that um, I will follow those rights diligently. And then I will sincerely swear to his majesty. So every single one of these swearings, um, have I shared it with you? Every single one of these swearings, Norm, right, is upholding <clears throat> the Bill of Rights that protects every ma all mankind protects all mankind, but now they've changed the words Almighty God and they've changed I swear by Almighty God to I swear by Gita. And then the oh, next God. one is they changed Almighty God, I swear by Allah. And then the other one they've changed is I swear by the Guru Nanak. And what we were saying is that that's what uh, Eliza is saying. She says, well, just because they swear to a different allegiance doesn't mean that they can't be in Parliament. And I'm saying, well, if they swear to those, oh, yeah, if they swear to those it's allegiances. It's not allegiance, it's their God. They're, they're, they're swearing allegiance to the crown or to the country. Even well, they're not the swearing to the country. Saying it. We're, we're all they are, they're the swearing to allegiance to the country. They're yeah, not swearing in their God. No, well, they can't because under their God, the laws of the country are different than the laws under Almighty God and the King, which are the 1688. You know when you're swearing to the King, you're swearing to the 1688 laws, but when they're swearing to Allah, they're swearing to Allah's laws or they're swearing to the Guru Nanak's laws. And so, therefore... That's the laws that they uphold. They're not upholding our laws that protect us. And so they're not supposed to be in Parliament if they're not. But the Jewish one is different because, look here, Norm, the Jewish one is actually okay because this one says that the members of the Jewish faith will use the oaths above and they also, some may wish to affirm. So they're using the Jewish faith are still using these oaths, which means that they say... But they're saying they still swear that they will be faithful and true allegiance to His Majesty the King. That's what they're saying. They're swearing no. that, even though they're saying by, by Allah he, or by the instrument. But, but, but when you start to look at the hierarchical um, facings of things, so the Almighty God comes first. And if their God's Allah or Buddha or Krishna or whoever or whatever... Then it's, it's apples and oranges. Yes. You know, you know it doesn't. When you look at the hierarchy, if they're there. Well, well then if you're swearing, higher, swearing under God, then you're also going to kill homosexuals. Then is that is that why? Well, because well, you it's can't because it, that was the punishment. Well, you can't because we've got no cruel. 
We've got no oh, cruel and unusual punishment, <laughs> so that would be blocked because God doesn't do anything. Anyway, cruel. because it's one of the, isn't one of the, the um, codes is not to kill. So, I mean, you know, yeah. you've really got to. Exactly. But, uh, well, okay, well, are you going on the New Testament or the Old the Testament? The Old Testament is Muslim. It's, it's part of the no, religion. It's not. No, it's not. It's not. The Old Testament, the Old Testament, Testament is very much part of the Christian religion, particularly if you're Catholic. But well, the, the Catholics are not allowed Catholic. either. The Catholics are absolutely yeah, okay. forbidden. It's the King James Bible. The, 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 oh, so you, okay, Catholic. you're Protestant, so you don't, you don't, you're Protestants, not Catholics. We we are Protestants. Oh, yes. well, okay, well, I'm I'm Catholic, so you know I've still got the the Old Testament as part of my religious beliefs. Well, well, all laws come from. The, all laws, you have to look at where law came from all the way back to Jesus or if we even go all the way back to the original tablets, they brought the tablet down from the mountain and they smashed it. All law can go right back to the caveman. It's when the caveman raped the woman on the floor and the leader said, don't do that, don't do that, and the next day he did it again and again and again. Finally, they drew a picture on the wall and it said, don't do that in their picture. And they said, if you do that, you're going to be out of the tribe on your own. The next time he went to do that horrible thing, they pointed at the wall. The man looked at the wall and he saw it and he read it and he understood. And then that was the law and he stopped doing what he was doing. So that's how law originally began. But then after that, the tablet. No shit. That's true. And then after that, Thousands of years later, many thousands, well, then you had the um, Sanskrit and then you had the canon law, the papal law, and then you had the um, Torah and then you had the um, Quran. Now, all of each and every one of those laws had laws that if you were not born of two parents to that religion, immediately you were born you were in that religion. If you were not born of that, then you were dirty. You were a dirty Gentile. And if you wanted to leave any one of those religions, the penalty was death. And homosexuality in any one of those religions, the penalty was death by torture, serious, serious torture. And they had many yeah, but, different but In tortures. my religion, also it's the same thing. As a Catholic, if you look at the Old Testament, it's the same punishment for lying with a man. So well, does that mean that it, if I was elected to Parliament and I swore by my God, which is the same God as the Protestant God, no, that it isn't. I would all of a sudden want to kill homosexuals? No. That's, because that, that is that, really that's where, just silly. That is, no. that is part of my religion, though. That, that's silly. That's silly. Those three no, it's texts. Not. It's no more silly than, right. than, than swearing well, on the Quran. Because you didn't it's let no me. More silly than that. Well, you didn't let me finish. Those three texts, those three books, were the originators of all law, and all law right back to Jesus started with those three texts. But the Gentiles uh, were out of all of those laws. So all the Gentiles that were not born to those, uh, the people of those religions. They were all just considered to be, they were considered to have no God and they were um, tortured and they were not permitted to own land and they were not, and they were the slaves and they were permitted to different, they were subjected to different sets of tortures of anyone born in those three religions. And then it just came to be that the canon religion all that happened is the original, the very first original religion from the very beginning was the Catholic religion. And then all that happened was the Jewish people, these other, a, a large group of people gathered together. They said, we don't want to be under those laws. So they created a new God. They created a whole bunch of stuff. They took some of the canon law and then they created a whole new book for themselves. They said, you be under those laws and we'll be under these ones and everybody else is in the dirt. That's what they did. And then all the Jews moved into the Islamic communities. Now, those Islamic communities originally were not run by um, by by they didn't have Muslims or anything. They had governments, they had voting, 
they had everything. But when the Jewish people came in and started forcing everybody under those laws, they suddenly came up with a new God and then they created a new book for themselves in their own language. And so then that's how it all came to be created. And then later on, very late in the 15th century, Martin Luther, who was a Catholic in Germany, he nailed his 95 theses to the church and he said, we all don't want to be under the doctrines of these three because of all the, the um, doctrines of indulgences and all the money that they were taking and all the land that they were taking and all the cruel punishments and it was illegal to speak against any of those three and you've got your tongues cut out. So he was the beginning of the St. James that only came in 1611 and then that, so now we had another set that we could all be under. So everyone got those laws right? And then all of them sat down together and they said, what is a law that can protect all of us, that all of us can follow and it doesn't damage any of the, what each one of them wants to have. And they came up with the 1688 Bill of Rights and the Pope himself and the Church of England came about and the Pope himself agreed to those laws. They all agreed because millions of people were being slaughtered, fighting over these lands and resources. And so that's when they all agreed. But there was a different sect that, came, that split from that, went to America, and they said, we don't want to do that. We want everyone, the Jacobite king, to be under one of the church doctrines. So they were not, and then that's when the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Latter day Saints. Now, the Latter day Saints are a new one. They're new on the block. They've risen up over the King James. And then the Latter day Saints, they have actually, part of what you have to do is they have created a language that nobody else knows. The only people that know that language are the upper godly people, the apostles of their temple. You have to be very high up to know what that language is. They have created a new book to follow with a whole bunch of new rules. Now, all these religions, the Catholic, the Jew, the Islamic, and the Latter-day Saints have decided to put us all under these Noahide laws called Noahide Laws, and we are called, we, the Protestants, are called Noachites. And under that, they have seven doctrines that we have to follow. But one of the major doctrines that we, under their idea, that we have to follow is that do no harm. But here's the problem. To them, if you speak against them, that is a harm. If you speak against anything about them and the penalty for that is decapitation, stoning, tongues cut out, or if you do anything against their God, which is to be a homosexual, that is a harm against their God and there's penalties against that. So calling me a homophobic is really ridiculous when I'm actually fighting to protect them from cruel punishments that the, the various religious texts would enforce on them if they didn't have the Protestant 1688 to protect them. So it's just ridiculous that you would even say that to me. Um, 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 I don't know about that. So but anyway, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dip out. I just want to say thank you uh, for hearing me out. So what I actually do is I kind of go around to groups and, um, and listen to them. And if they are like white nationalists, neo-Nazis, I tend to expose them. And right now, this Zoom has been on a Twitch stream with hundreds of people watching. And now everybody knows that this particular group is bigoted, racist, Christo-fascist, neo-Nazis. So thank you for adding yourself. You're going to be famous. Your words. 
Ah, I probably will be famous you, because we've been you wanting are everyone what you to know. You, you should them, embrace what you are and be proud of it. it. You should be proud of it. I am proud yeah. of it. Yeah. I'm proud of everything. Yeah, I know you're proud of that it. Kate. I'm very it's proud of it. that you're proud of it. I, oh, I used to think you were all right, you know. I used to actually think you were all right, just a little bit cooked, but you are fucking baked. <laughs> You're horrible. Wow. You're horrible. You're all fucking horrible. Uh, Honestly. Uh, coming from someone who's infiltrating you, it <laughs> doesn't say much, does it? I know, I know. A traitor. Infiltrating. Traitor. Hardly infiltrating. Um, well, well you're coming on false pretenses, yeah, aren't you? Obviously. It. Yeah, but I, I didn't try and hide who I was, right? Right from the beginning, I was challenging you guys. And. I didn't, didn't expect such a, didn't such a blatant. You're operating on an ulterior motive. I didn't expect such a blatant abuse of Nazism. That was well, amazing. Well, what you've done is expose how no. low life you are. No. I'm low life, life. am I? Well, you well, are. You're coming in here on the well, false pretense. Well, you don't like being uh, it, trying to expose yourselves. people. Why would you care? Why would you care? We don't. You're so proud of yourselves yeah, and your you beliefs. Don't. Why would you care that the whole world's now going to see you, your faces, Our and know that you are neo Nazis? Oh, wow, man. There's, there's nothing a, wrong with being eye. a Nazi. There's oh, nothing wrong with being a Nazi. I don't I, see anything wrong. That's where you were going. Just, just cry out, Kate. Just you don't walk need up. to defend the truth. The truth defends itself. Yeah. yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Norm. Truth is that you're bigoted. No, racist. She, she wouldn't get in again. You were really so, mad at me. Something you don't really like. Mean. Just abuse them and call them racist and bigoted yeah. and neo Nazis. But it? you are listening to yourselves. Listen to yourselves. You oh, know what? I, I, I what think you're you a, um, a UN, a United Nations plant. I, I bet so. you get yeah. paid yeah. From the every world. week. But to I run around sites and stir me. up this. We know that the yeah, United Nations is paying no, people you're not that intelligent. just like no. you. Yeah, and no. I believe you're one of them. Yeah, I do you believe. Yeah. So, yeah. And you know what stands you out the most plants. for me, mate, is that you sit there and hide your face. Why don't you show your face and I'll see yeah. your face around to 100. Because I don't want my face. You know face what? Face you know face what? Face because, you know what? Because you... You know, people that show their faces oh, are walking you know in the light. You've sat there hiding your face, talking yeah, your bullshit. Yeah, show she your face. Show my face. Eliza. Face people when I stick you all over the internet. Show your face well, and your dirty little mouth. I'm saying you're going to post it all over your Twitter pages, you wally. God, you're a muppet. Yeah. You're a muppet. <laughs> you, you you're a muppet. That's what you, you are. No a muppet so puppet. You're projecting, projecting onto a muppet puppet. Yeah, yeah projecting. That's oh, right. A muppet Nazi puppet projecting Nazi from the United bad. Nations bull crap paid to cause trouble in our lovely, lovely country. I wish I was paid, yeah. Kate. Yeah, I, I, I believe I you paid. are. Yeah. No, it's really intelligent. I wish. Yeah. So, well, hang on. Am I paid or aren't I paid? Show your Am face, I, Eliza. Show your face. You, you know, I just realised you sat here this whole time. You obviously haven't got a life if you're sitting there complaining about us all and you, you're still here. What are you doing? That's right. Because you're funny. Apart from being disgusting, you're also funny. Why don't you go? You've got no life. <laughs> exactly. You've got no life. No, like, yeah. why I've don't got, you? I've got no life. You people sit around talking about how hard done you are. No, we don't. No, we don't. You wouldn't know what we're doing. No, we don't. We're in 1688. It's all I fucking hear. Ah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. What are we going to talk about next? I think that you're. You feel better about yourself. I don't kick people out because I'm not that kind of person. Um, But what I do say to people is everybody knows that what we're only doing. We only want them to follow the laws that we have. And I think that there's nothing wrong that we want them to follow the laws that we have. If they don't want that to be the law, then they should remove that law. But presently, those are the laws that we have and we want them to uphold the laws that they've given to us. I don't think that's wrong. Every country they has laws. The they are not laws. upholding our laws, oh and so goodness. we want them to uphold. And so we, I have been going to the court 
to get put in my subject status so that I can ask them to uphold their laws. Now, um, that's what our group is about. And if you're not um, wishing to want our governments to uphold the laws, then you should go into one of their other groups. There are many, many other groups that you can go to. The Muslim got lovely groups. The um, the Jewish people have got lovely groups. The Catholic oh, people. Oh, go away, Kate. You've, oh, I'm, you've I'm got your groups. Catholic, go into right? those groups. Right. Well, actually, I'm an atheist, but my background well, is Roman Catholic. Well, you go into those Jew, groups. I'm not an Arab. <laughs> Well, oh, I have a law, but, I mean, it's no good being in our group. No, I, there's nothing confusing about it. I was brought up Roman Catholic and I am now an atheist. But if no, I was going to swear no, on a Bible, if I had to swear on a Bible, then it would be a Catholic Bible. Well, you don't I, swear on an atheist. Who them? Well, that's right, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't I, swear I, on a Bible. But if Eliza, I had to. Eliza, just help me out here. Can you... Indicate what age you are. I just want to see where this is all kicking in at what age group. What do you mean kicking in? I just want to know how old. I'm 52. What 52. bullshit? I don't believe you, liar. Don't you? No. Uh, oh, no. okay. How old am I then, Kate? Oh, just at that age, surely. She's yeah. not 52. She's lying, no. telling lies. No. Telling lies. How old am I then, Kate? Lying, Eliza, the Eliza, the liar. <laughs> I, I think... wish I was younger, mate. How old? How old do you think I am? Well, show your face. 20? Show your face, and then we'll all know. No, you tell me. Why? You, you know what? I would like to know, Eliza, that if you think that we're so disgusting and so evil, and yet we are willing to sit up here with our faces up here because we believe in what we're doing and we believe that it is good for, 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 for all mankind. We do believe that. Why is it that you are ashamed to show your face? What What's your shame? What are you hiding? Because there's no shame I don't in us. want my face associated with people like you. Well, why did I you come in here then? I get the kickback why didn't you go her. out? She wants to protect herself. She's, she's afraid of I the I don't want my face. Her. She doesn't realise you she's looking the Muppet here. Well, why did you join our group then? Why didn't you just watch the I show you why. and not come in? I, see, see, I thought you were funny. Oh. I thought you were a bit cooked and you're entertaining to put on my Twitch stream. But then as you got talking, I realised that you're not funny. Do you know what, really do you know what group person. I think you come from? That I did join an Australian group and the guy that um, was running that group uh, I went into that group, and I think that you're from that group. And that group was a Which bunch. Was that, that was a group of com common law people. And I've had nothing but trouble since I joined his group because I had a fight with him. And I said to him, I didn't want to be in his group, and I left his group. And he come back. He was very angry about that. And since is then, this my coach, I and this is, yes, I believe it is. So this is this is no, but this is. Um, and so that was an Australian group. And since then, a couple of weeks ago, we had a whole bunch of people like you come in and turn on their loud music and live stream me and take their shirts off and pretend to be masturbating themselves <laughs> on my show. And then now here we've got you, and I believe you're all you. from the same group. But I'll I'll just I have, have to. to I, I've got to I've got to come clean with that one, Kate. Yes, that was my group. Yes, that was right. My group. Well, there you that go. Was, that yeah, was definitely me. It's the same lot. Jody. I gotta come, gotta come clean with that. That was hilarious. Right, oh, come I've, on, that well, was funny. There, there, you have there, it. there you go, there you go. So there you go. Yeah, that, that was go. definitely us. Okay. And at that time, you know, and because of that, and because of how well you well, handled well, that, well. because of how well you handled that, I said to my guys, "Let's not troll Kate today. Like, let's just watch it. Let's just watch Kate today. Watch what right. she's got to say." Wow. And I had no intention. Oh, you and your mates have got no lives at all. No. Have you, you poor little. We have great lives we enjoy ourselves every night we watch idiots and we enjoy ourselves but yeah, yeah sorry about that okay I was I was actually saying like let's not troll Kate tonight but then when I was hearing what you were saying it was too fucking much was, I just didn't I didn't realize you were a Nazi I didn't realize I just didn't realize um well there's nothing wrong with being a Nazi I don't know why you're saying that as if it's something bad I mean you can be what you want. If you want to be a Nazi, you can be a Nazi. 
you don't have to like everybody, you know. We've got laws that say no cruel and unusual punishments and as long as you're not um, enforcing cruel and unusual punishments, um, I, I'm not opposed to what the Germans did and I do believe that the English king supported them and um, the Germans, what had happened in their society is their entire society had been taken over by these um, religious factions and nobody could get a job. All the government departments were taken over. All the top paying jobs were taken over. They had infiltrated all of the Germanic tribes. And um, a lot of people don't realise this, is that if they... All right. I've got, I got to go, so Kate. So there's nothing wrong with being a Nazi. I'm, I would be ashamed to call it Nazi. Nazi propaganda right there. You can just right keep there. calling me I'm a Nazi. I like being called a Nazi. Oh, my God. I'm going to get the swastika and put it up on my flag. Shit. You are a piece of shit. You're fucking disgusting. Oh, my God. You're fucking disgusting. You are disgusting. Oh, my God. You're fucking disgusting. You are disgusting. I'm going to send this to ASIO, so um, So, And you won't even show your face, you gutless wonder. Isn't that gutless? I mean... That has it's got to be the most gutless thing that anybody does that they won't show their face and yet they will, you know, spout this bullshit. Troll. Troll, yeah. She, she, she said it herself, but she said it, yeah. didn't she? Didn't yeah. she? She said, she said, we are the same group that trolled you last time and disrupted the entire video and she said we were coming back to troll you again but mm. we decided not to and to wait a little bit and troll you at the end so she actually did say that right on the show and um so i guess how do we deal with this normal what what the way that we can stop these people coming in but let the genuine people come in um, I don't know what you can do. I think you can mute them, can't you? Just uh, she's not even showing her face. I wouldn't even be letting anyone in that's not showing their face for a start. Yes. All right. Yeah. That that that's well. There are some people that do wish to make, yeah, remain know, anonymous. And, and there are people, uh, you know, like there are people like this little low level individual out there that just want to disrupt people's discourse. You know. Yeah, so yeah. so. But why are you giving the space? I don't understand why you don't block them. <laughs> I would have just blocked her, mate. She was just like she, she as, soon, when, as soon as she admitted she was trolling, mate, she would have been out again in my book. Oh, so you think I should be a bit um tougher? Well, a bit more discerning. Yeah, definitely. Don't let every every dog and his bloody, you know, every man and his dog in the door, you're gonna be distracted from getting anywhere. No, just you know, keep with the people the in anything, was she? She was just, a, as you say, just, just trying to keep in the storm. That's yeah. all she was here to do, mate, is just distract us from going moving forward. Right. You know, I wouldn't know. Given that you gave her too much time, as far as I was concerned, but that's all right, she'll show. <laughs> I get, um, I, I get all caught up in this free speech thing, and so I. I don't mind people if they're speaking against me because you have to allow for people to speak against you because that's how you learn. But like oh, you yes. say... Well, they're, if they're, they're deliberately trolling yeah, and abusing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's right. That? Yeah, and they're not interested in talking about the laws or any of the things that we're interested in. And um, so, yeah, I, sh I, I, I will definitely admit that I've kind of messed up again because I, I probably, sh I, I definitely should not have allowed that. But I think the criteria, I, I'm going to delete this video from the YouTube and I'm going to, unfortunately, I have to delete everybody, not because I don't want it to be seen, but it, it does distract, doesn't it? And then I'll redo the video with the things that um, I did, but I'll just do it by myself is what I'll do. And then uh, next time, uh, what we'll do, well, it's very good that you came in, Norm, because I do think having the manly voice um, mm. uh, uh, <laughs> did put her in a place quite a bit, I think. Well, yeah, I mean, you've, I you've got no-faced no people that seem to be trolling you and abusing you, you know, stepping in and, and distracting us from where you, you know, the information that you're trying to impart and express and share. So, 
you know, it's not and a good look. And distorting it too. Just distorting it. Completely like distorting laughing it. about it. Like, I'm, um, yes, I'm, uh, you know, the one new world order, you know, like we're conspiracies, you know, or, oh, yes, I'm working for Bill Gates and, you know, ha ha, funny, funny. Like, it's all just a big joke. Yeah, that's right, man. She was they have no idea. They it's, have no idea what's going on in the real world. It's childish, though, isn't it? You know, well, it was, you know, and, and we're not going to. Like the other times, wow. It's very childish. They might be in, in, but if they're not going to be adults about it, and they can just piss off, I think. That's why I asked her age. I don't yeah, think yeah, she's exactly. 52. I don't, I don't, I don't mm. quite believe that. But maybe she's no, not child Look, it, it, 52. Meet her on a common law group. Oh, was it on a common law group? So they, they, they bombarded that one as well. I joined a, I had a person contact me. And um, remember, and um, he said, do you want to join this group? And I joined that group and they, they were talking about this um, lady who was going through the courts uh, to fight against having to pay a traffic fine and she had spent, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in court time would have been spent um, going through the courts for this court fine. It was like $12 or something. She'd only been in the country for like 10 years or something. And she was spent, she was going through the courts, protesting, protesting all through the courts to get out of this $12 fine because she was speeding. But she admitted that she was speeding dangerously on the road, but she didn't want to pay the fine because she didn't recognize the government and she didn't recognize the courts and she didn't recognize the police under our laws. So that I was in that group. Excuse Kate, just for a second. Are you recording? Because I've got a recording up oh. here. No, that's me. Okay. I'll I'll just um, stop it. Is that better? the recording has yeah. stopped? Yep. Sorry. Oh. I just Sorry. thought someone else might have been coming in and recording. So um, oh, so they're all talking about the Bible, Kate. I hate uh, your dealing with this is happening oh here so this is from phil so phil says he says kate i hate you're dealing with this it's happening to a lot of the podcasts so that's a really good thing that he says that because that means that our mm. viewers know exactly what's going on and unfortunately it's it's a pity i didn't really listen to norm um sometimes i just get caught up in the heat of it and i don't realize when we're being scammed and Norm is right onto it. And then this guy, Phil, he says, yeah. And then he says, um, he believes the ten, oh, the ten Commandments are yours. You need reminding not to kill, to love your parents, not to sleep with your neighbour's wife. That's what he's saying. And mm. But you don't need to be stoned and have your con tongue cut out and decapitated for those things. So that's what we need protection. So he's really great. So they're all on topic. Maxine says, I love you. Uh, Maz Weaver said, your message is getting lost in the inaccuracies. And um, so that that is a, a, and then this Phil says she's 25, not 52. And then mm -hmm. um, he says, go serve your Lucy, go serve your Lucy infiltrator. So that that's lovely. But then, so... I think it's all a bit of a compliment all round, really. I mean, yeah. she, she's sharing sharing all your information with all the Twitter mates and yeah. coming over here. And <laughs> it's yeah, going to get a hundred thousand views. <laughs> they do know. That's what she said. She goes around, looks for people with funny videos. Yeah, I've got nothing better to do than say, "Hey, look at this funny video," and ha ha, whatever. And you know, uh, she's obviously getting into these groups that is is the with Kate one, the common law one. They've gone on that and they've bombarded that. Yeah. And now she's found Kate. Now she's following Kate and thinks, oh, Kate's quite funny. But oh, actually, some of the things she's saying and she's getting, she knew nothing, didn't she? But she mm -hmm. just basically thought it's like. Um, but she sounds like the young woke ones. ones. Yeah. yeah. Young exactly. Young yeah. white ones about this, oh, you're a racist, you're this, you're that, you're this. That's exactly how they come back at everything. Yeah. Wounded yeah. little cupcakes and snowflakes, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cupcakes. 
and snowflakes. Phil says she's got that Catholicism spirit. And he says, if you, he says, Allah and Jehovah are the same entity. Yes, I believe that they are. They all come from the same thing and we need protection. He says, if you reverse Jehovah, turn it upside down and compress mm -hmm. it, it's the same word. So reverse it and then turn it upside down. I'll I'll go and do that, Phil. I I not I'll go and have a look at what that happens there. Don't fall the e fall for the evil double speak or the wordsmithing. Maxine says, totally agree, Norm. Seems like she has some people watching over this case. Where the danger is, I was going to delete this from YouTube, but where the real danger is, is that they cut your video and they take one piece of half the, the sentence. Off. Yeah, and then they put that on and yeah. then they say that that's what she said. But yeah. I find that the yeah. best way is Anyone to just let cheer. them. Anyone can cherry pick and take things out of context at any stage. So yeah, where well, yeah, uh, so you can't stop. And what have we got to hide? Have we got exactly. nothing to hide? Have exactly. we? No, we got nothing to hide. So, so exactly. why do we need to edit anything or or censor anything or delete anything? We got nothing to hide here. Yeah, ex that's exactly right. Well, the reason we know that we've got nothing to hide is because we show our faces. People well, that have got things to hide yeah. don't show their faces, Norm. <laughs> so. Um, so mm. fellas, uh, they're saying, all right, there's a whole conversation. I said, Norm, you missed a bit. Phil's, all right, what did Pat Patricia said, watch Jordan Maxwell. He explains a lot about the rat, but I've also seen the rat and I know people, I'm not a follower of any religion at all. I only just have my own godly status with God. So he said, follow the Ra, but I don't follow the Ra. But I will say in that one thing, there can only be one son. There can't be two sons. There's only one. And then it says, Patricia, I agree with you. What they say and what you say is God is not the same sister. And then I'm not into the sister-brother thing because I've only got a brother and you're not my brother, Norman. You're not my sister, Jodie and Diane. <laughs> then they say, is the great dupe that i been given from source. Where is this money going? We're asking for the Maori. I don't see it. It's things have been getting worse for us. So Patricia must be a New Zealand Maori, and she's exactly right. Billions of dollars are being handed to them, billions of lands, resources, mm -hmm. and they are suffering and they've got nothing. Mm -hmm. We're asking where the hell is the money going? It's only around 200,000 Maori. They should all be driving around in Mercedes Benzes, living yeah. in mansions in Auckland with all the money we've given them. Where's it going? And I will tell you where it's going. They've attached them as Indigenous people to the United Nations of Indigenous People, and that comes under a huge umbrella of refugees and all of those people. And then when we give $2 million to a, an initiative for the Maori, that money is given to the Indigenous people. Mm -hmm. They give a small portion of that to our 200,000 Maori and then they give the bigger portion to all of the other ethnic minorities that have glued on to, and that's where all the money's going to pay for all the refugees to be set up because where do you think the money comes in to set them all up. It's got to come from somewhere and they've got to be able to account for it in Parliament. So they say, right, we're going to give $3 million to the Indigenous people of New Zealand or the Indigenous. And then all that comes under the Indigenous is the Asians, the Muslims, the Pacifica. It's then the $2 million and then that group has got 2 million people and the Maori's got 200,000. So that gets divided between them. But then the problem is they've also got all these people that they want to come in. They've got to get a house. They've got to get a job. And so they have to justify. Uh, they don't actually tell you where that money comes from to give to them. So I'm figuring it goes through the Maori. So it goes through the Maori 
and it's like goes in this ear of the Maori and it goes out that ear of the Maori, right? Through the fanny and out the ass to someone else is where it goes. So you've got paperwork showing that though, Kate, haven't you? I've got they paperwork showing name. it, but I have not got time to do a video on it. But I've got the yeah, paperwork they that shows the that. Maori name to yeah. everything so they get the funding. Yeah, so that's that's if you're still there, Patricia, uh, that's where all the money's been going. It's not been going to you. Uh, the chief, they get funneled through the iwis, not through the hapus or anything, it's through those corporate entities called iwis. All, all the, of the, those are. Foreigners, that's run by mm -hmm. foreigners. And I, I do believe that that's, I'm not being rude, but I think it's a cop-out to say that it's going to iwi. I don't think it's all going to the iwi. I think that a large percentage goes to the iwi for them to keep their mouth shut. A very tiny percentage goes to the New Zealand Maori on the ground. And then the biggest portion goes for funding all these people that they're bringing in and all of the stuff that they're giving them. So there's a lot going on here. Um, the chiefs are taking, they shouldn't be wearing it. They're trying to force the jab, the hijab. I uh, agree with you, Kate, it's a different jurisdiction. Oaths are from evil, condemn Matthew. The oaths are, but this is not, this oath, people don't understand what this oath is. The oath is not for us to swear to. They, um, it's like Jesus, Jesus sacrificed himself so that we could live, all right? It's the same thing. For a certain portion of their life, four years, they sacrificed all of their own rights. They basically die. They enter parliament. They sacrifice and they take the oath for us so that we don't have to take it, so that we can have our free speech and we can have our no punishment. So they take the oath, we don't. That's the sacrifice that they make for us and that's why they get paid so much because of the sacrifice that they have to make. They make the sacrifice for us and they take the oath, so we're not taking it. The oath is that they will protect us under Almighty God. So that's why that comes about. Um, they're not sworn to God. Yes, this is what Maz says. They're not sworn to God. They're sworn to the crown. And if they're religious, if they're religious, they're sworn by the deity people worship. If not religious, the wording is I swear and affirm. Oh, I don't know about that, Maz Weaver, but I think we better have another talk about this. But Norm's not in the class. So we've got to make another talk where we're going to have Norm in the class and make sure the trolls are not in and have a talk about this again. Yeah, going uh, allegiance to the Crown, though, isn't that the Crown is the government? So it, you allegiance to Almighty God. It is. Well, a, I think we need to do a whole another can't, session. Can't allegiance to the Crown, per se. We'll have to go government. back. We'll have to go back that's and... There, there are many, they take the oath of allegiance, then they take the judicial oath, then they take the affirmation of allegiance, and then they take an affirmation, which is slightly different, but they still do. They still say, they, they take the word here. So is this a troll or not? I've got to go, so this is going to be my last bit. They're allowed to take an affirmation, and the affirmation, are you there, Eel? Eel? A-E, Eel? Are you there? We're going to have a rule now, Eel, that you have to um, show your face for a wee minute um, and speak for a wee minute because we've got trolls coming in. So if you're not prepared to show your face, I'll have to put you out of the group. Do you want to stay, Eel? Well, um, five, four, three, two, one. Um, I'll have to put you out of the group, Eel. But if you want to come in the group, you have to show your face. That's the rule. That's you gone. 
So he's out. So um, the affirmation, see, I'm getting strong now, Norma, no. Um, mm-hmm. the, the oath of allegiance is that they swear by Almighty God and that the allegiance is to King Charles. But the affirmation, um, they still declare and affirm, or they get two lines here, that they will serve King Charles in the office of um, and to do right to all manner of people after the laws and usages of this realm. So they still say this here, which is still the 1688 Bill of Rights, but they do it under the sovereign king. And then in place of almighty God, they put Allah or Guru Nanak. So they're not allegiant to the Church of England. They're only allegiant to the king. But they still say that they will affirm the right and the manner of people under the king because the king is the um but i just don't see how they can do that because of the punishments that they have under allah's bible how can they possibly swear not to do cruel and unusual punishments with putting Mm. king charles over power of their allah So what they're basically saying is Mm. that King Charles is more powerful than their Allah's religious laws. And I believe that it is a um, crime against Allah. It's a conflict. I believe that they have, um, 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 what's they've been not allegiant to Allah by doing that. That it, mm. it it's almost a crime in their religion to do that. If you really follow mm. their religion, yeah. it would be yeah. a crime for them because they've said that they will do all right and manner of the people after the laws that's given by King Charles. Mm. What they've basically done is put Allah there Well, no, they just put their name and they don't put any God at all. So they put your name and they replace swear by Almighty God with I swear by Allah and then the rights and laws. So, yes, they have basically put King Charles Mm. under Allah. That's what they've done because Mm. he's under Almighty God when they remove that word almighty God and replace it with Allah, they've basically put the key and then say, I will follow the right and laws. They're talking about the rights and the laws of Allah. They are. Or the guru, Mm. Nanak. That's how I read it. Mm. Is that how you read it? That's how I read it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, See, by, by... By swearing allegiance through um, King Charles, His Majesty King Charles III, that puts it back through the seat or, as you put it, the shelf of the monarchy. And that stems from the 1688, the 1215 Magna Carta. So there's, there's foundational documents that, that constitute the seat of the realm of the monarchy. And so... And so by by having His Majesty King Charles III in there, I think it, it, it as you say, it kind of usurps their own their own God and and it does. They're, state, they're stating that, that the realm of the Majesty is higher. So or yeah, so. you or you can look at either way because we look at our 1688 Bill of Rights and you can see exactly what it says. It says the late King James II, having ab- oh, no, hang on, abdicated the government, the throne thereby being vacant, 
His Highness, the Prince of Orange, whom it has pleased Almighty God to be the glorious instrument. So it says that the Highness is only the glorious instrument under Almighty God. Almighty God. So oh, that God. means if you remove Almighty God and you put the Guru Nanak, that means that King Charles is basically <laughs> under the the instrument. He is the instrument under the Guru Nanak. Yeah, but that's right. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're claiming allegiance to another jurisdiction. Mm, yeah. That's right. So, you know, meaning meaning that they've got their feet in two camps. Yes. Which is, yes. Which is tre treason on one side or the other, isn't it? <laughs> on both sides, on both sides. It's it's treasonous to Allah to put King Charles in charge because they believe that only Allah's laws are the only laws and anything outside of that is repugnant to their religion. So how can they put... <laughs> By removing Almighty God, you're removing the 1688, right? Yeah, I think you are. Right I think so, oh, I Jody. Think so. You've yeah. removed yeah. 1688 and then King Charles just becomes a little instrument for whoever you... You could put Tom, Dick or Harry in there and it wouldn't matter. It, 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 it's, it's true. It, it's under Allah. Yes. So. If, if it's under Allah, then you're under the Quran. Yeah. That's their law because it says they're the right... Well, the Quran gives them many rights and it says mm. their laws. So it doesn't say which right. And under Almighty God, we know which right it is. No, under does. Allah, yeah. we know which right it is. Under the Guru Anak, we know which right it is. So they're very different, aren't they? And so the only one that I would approve of is this one by the Jewish where he said, well, I want to be in Parliament. And I think this is quite acceptable. He says, I want to be in Parliament, but when I'm in Parliament, I'm going to uphold this almighty God under the king. But when I leave Parliament, um, he's going to go into his Jewish laws and live in that with his family and with his life and not force them onto other people. I think this is quite acceptable, actually. I in, think it's, in my view, Kate, and thinking a little bit more about this, why are they even allowing Hindu, Jew, Muslim and Sikhs in there anyway? Next thing you're going to have Krishnas in there and Buddhas in there and where, where does it end? They're not yeah. allowed in there because it says here that That's the people right. being Protestants, you're That's not allowed right. to be long to any of the major religions and why is that? Because... They have huge, huge mega churches and they can campaign for votes all year round. When it comes to voting time, they vote based on their race and their religion and that's it. And nobody else can get a job and that's what happened in Germany under Hitler, before Hitler. That's exactly what happened. It's happened many times in our history and that's why they said only the Protestants, which is just protest ants, all the people, all the Gentiles that were not belonging to any of the mega religions were allowed to be in Parliament because we don't have huge mega church groups that we go to every week where we can drum up members to vote for us. So that's why it was all, yeah, um, they're not that's supposed right. to be in there. That's, that, right. that's what I'm saying, Norm. Protestant want a third party interloper to have to get to the creator. We don't want the churches and the synagogues and the friggin' mosques and that to be able to get to our creator. We don't need them, in fact. No, no that's just not. A, yeah. A third party intermarry. And that shouldn't even be allowed to be. That's right. I agree. Damn okay. straight. Has King uh, in, until such time as we can go over there and build a Christian church in amongst there countries and that, then maybe we might start thinking about it. But until, until such time as that occurs, then piss off. Seriously. The, when, they, when they created the world, they created a bunch of different countries to allow for each of us to function. Everybody got a few or a couple. 
So they made some Muslim countries, they made some Buddhist countries, they made some Confucius countries, Japan got their Zen country, they made some Protestant countries, they made they got one Jewish country. The Jews were not permitted to, and there's very important reasons why that, that is, but I won't go into that just now. But so they, they did, and our Protestant countries were the countries where if they, because each of those religions, the penalty for leaving them is death and also torture. So the re, what they was, the original agreement was when they entered New Zealand, they had to swear a, an oath of allegiance. They had to basically be leaving their religion and swear an oath yeah. of allegiance, and that's how they were Jesus, citizens. And then they were going to be born into our country and be free from the yeah. chains of the religions that they say that they don't want to be a part of anymore. Because they said, mm. I don't want to wear the hijab. I don't want to wear this thing on my face. So they let them come to our countries as Protestants. That's what they were allowed. And when they was, came into our countries, they were supposed to be free and release mm. themselves from that. But nowadays, since they removed all that um, condition of those oaths, they are now bringing their four wives and their five kids to each wife, and they've outpopulated us, and that's why we have um, a an Indian Prime Minister of England who's sworn in legion to the Guru Anak and is not a legion. So that that is what's going on. And um what concerns me, Kay, is is that King Charles has actually said that he will be a defender of all faiths and religions. You know, that he hasn't said a defender, his oath isn't a defender of the faith. Oh, yeah. No, so he's actually quite happy to step into that role. So he's, is this what's happening? I mean, this is, you know, is, is you know, intentionally, like, he's he's allowing himself to be... Instrument. Uh, yeah, like, but also below Allah, Allah, you know? Yeah. Because that is, you know, swearing almighty to, to Allah. Yeah. Do you see that from... Phil, Phil likes Norm. <laughs> I don't know. What does he like? No, I like Norm too. So you, everyone can <laughs> like Norm, but you're not allowed to fancy Norm. You're allowed to like him, but not fancy him. So You know, the little lines I'm drawing the sand here myself, actually. Draw, draw the lines in the sand now. Get it clear to everybody that you're permitted to like Norm, and that's all. And we're not permitted to fancy Norm, even though he's extremely good looking. So I'll just draw that line <laughs> in the sand there for you, Norm. But what what a sweet! They don't say that to me. I like Kate Floss. I don't get any of that. No. And um, so the reformation was signed in two thousand and seventeen with the ah. Oh, he said he likes your stand, not he doesn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> he likes you right, stand right. he doesn't fancy like you. you you have to be a little bit more clear there Phil because we were I, was, I looked at it and I saw I like Norm and I was about to say ah oh, this little chicky on here likes you Norm and then I thought oh no that's a man I think because his name is Phil and then I thought to myself it might be a homosexual. And then I didn't want to say anything because that girl said, no, I didn't want to say. So I just said, oh, you can't fancy. But um, he's laughing now. But, no, he mm -hmm. likes your stand. Uh, he said, I see where your dirty little mind goes, Kate Floss. He said, you've just got a dirty mind, but I wasn't thinking that at all. But, okay, so good on you. So that's funny. So he says the America's Act of 1871 says, King at that time is the God. I can show you this. I'm sending it on my messenger. Good on you. Uh, oh, what we've got to do is just keep going to these laws and looking at the law changes 
And then what we've got to do is say to us ourselves, you know, as we were doing in the David, uh, David, is it David Biggs video? Higgs video, uh, is to to find our grounding, to find our footing, and then join together and 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 fight for those things for all people. It it is for all people, and it because it just means that even and I think that the United Nations should be um, encouraging those countries to change their laws with cruel and unusual punishments and speech laws. They should be getting in their yeah. homosexual laws rather than try to force us to change our laws to not have those things. What they should be doing is forcing them to change those laws to allow themselves to have those things so that their people don't have to run away. You know, if their people were not subjected to cruel punishments, they wouldn't need to leave their homelands. If their people... But they, it would never happen. Eh? Well... Because of the religion. I just think they've got it all around the, the wrong way round. It's, it, it's if you've got... Um, it's if you've got a bunch of naughty kids that won't do as they're told in a fair system for everybody and you you think that putting um, two good kids in with the naughty kids is going to make the naughty kids be good, it isn't going to work. What you've got mm. to do is to keep them separated and keep... In Thailand, they have four classes, right? They're all... Uh, we call them high school one. They have high school one up to high school six. When you enter high school one, right, everybody goes to do the test and everybody that passes the test gets put into, because there are many, many kids, you go into class one, class two, class three, and class four. But in order to get into class four, you've got to pass a second test. To pass the second test, you have to be, you have to pass based on a portfolio. You have to show your good works, all the good things that you've done, the way that you behave at school, your certificates that you've got. And you have to pass on that and you have to pass in the top grades as well. They all go into the class four and these three classes are full of naughty kids. They just do what they can with them, but they don't, they keep them separated from this fourth class of the ones that are um, behaving in a reasonable way, not kicking people, not hitting people, hanging people, decapitating people, um, letting people live freely and letting people study and learn and do those things. They all go mm. there. So that's how you have to do it. The minute that you take these other three classes and throw them in with the fourth class, all you end up is with four naughty classes yeah. and you've got, and you lose them all. So that That's right. It's summed up in the old adage that, that one rotten fruit spoils the whole barrel. Yeah. yeah exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So the criteria for all of these people to come in was, here was the criteria. that they First they had to swear allegiance. They were coming because they wanted to get out of this. Then they swore allegiance to the 1688 Bill of Rights that gave them the right to not be cruelly treated and to be able to yeah. speak freely and not have to wear these garments that they didn't want to wear. And then the yeah. next criteria was that they could not govern because they obviously would not be ready to govern our country coming from what they've come from. How could you? It's yeah. like putting a drug addict in, in charge of the of the teenagers at school of the pharmaceutical it's it's just madness so you have to give them a chance to you know get used to and and then their children are still half nationals right and but then their their next children are full nationals and then they can govern because then they deemed to be fully allegiant to the country Assimilated exactly, yeah. and I think it's a pretty fair system that keeps everything yeah. so that they'll be protected for all times to come. That's right. We, we like by uh, you know, overseas countries, we have to go like if we go to Dubai or something like that, and you're not married, you have to sh show a marriage certificate to stay in a hotel, 
you know, yes. even in your, your temples in Thailand, you have to right. put your yeah. things on. Yeah, and if you go into the, uh, India and you go to the Taj Mahal, mm-hmm. you have to wear the, you know, the cover. I mean, you have to cover up. You have to dress appropriately. All, all the temples in Thailand is, is um, respect, and you do it for respect. Why don't they respect our laws then? We we just got a one one ev- one for everything. Everything we're open to all the Wild West. Mm-hmm. And and it's so starting you, to have an effect when now. You're Rome, when you better do as the Romans do, otherwise you're going to get fed to the lions. Well, That's how it works. They're feeding us to the lions is what they're doing. Um, so well, that's right. we're going to be fed right. to the lions. They 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 plan on eating us because we are actually called the food of the Jews. That's what humans are. Human, go and look up what human means, and it means the food of the wandering Jews. And that they used to eat the Gentiles. That's what we call human. Human, the food of the wandering it. Jews. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, name is God. <laughs> But that you see here, that, but if they do their oath of allegiance like that, I thought their one was good. They didn't take out Almighty God. So they leave mm. the Almighty. Oh, no, they don't. They take out the Almighty God, but they mm-hmm. don't replace it with any other God. I think that is, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but by not replacing it with another God, it means that they're not putting us under their laws. So I I think I'd have to look at that one again, but it seemed to me to be a wee bit more reasonable with than what the other ones were. But I definitely think we need to come back and talk about this. That's what but we're going to talk about. Be there at all. None of them should be in there. I don't it's, think it's so. Right. I, I don't think so. so. It is. Why are we entertaining any of them? No. No, exactly. It's not, it's not, Why it's, 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 it's good. Actually, those, those oaths were actually, um, was that from the UK website, though, wasn't it? The UK it did least, it, and yeah. New Zealand has recently done it. Well, I'm sure we always in the lockstep and still leave it behind, but we're usually not far away. Oh, wait till you find yeah. out what they've done. I've got to do the treaties with you, Norm. We've got to come back. I've got to go. There's four treaties. They've changed all the laws, and there is a new, uh, there is a new law out with the new boundaries of New Zealand that are not the boundaries that we have, and those are the boundaries of Aotearoa. So I'm not got time for that. I've got to pick up my son. I'm in so much trouble. I'll see you all later. But you, I'll see you later there on YouTube. Goodbye, everyone. I love you all. Come back in, Norm. We love you. Bye-bye. Love you, but not fancy you. Love, but not fancy. Just love, love your stand, but not fancy your lovely, handsome <laughs> face. Nah. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye. 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 B